friends of recently ousted former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy are livid at Democrats for failing to back him amid his historic ejection. But Democrats are adamant the GOP has no one to blame but themselves. This is according to The Hill. And while the Republicans are enduring a proverbial civil war, Democrats seem to be in lockstep. Here's MSNBC pointing out just that fact. I think Sahil had the tweet of the day, actually, where he tweeted and he underscored that Speaker Nancy Pelosi, when she was Speaker, had the exact same very slim margin that Kevin McCarthy did. And for all the him and hawing that a number of progressives did do privately, nothing like this ever happened while she was Speaker of the House. And can one make, you know, we hear all the time the far right and the far left, but even the most progressive members of Congress, Simone, you can't point to anything that they're simply trying to blow up the system, cause chaos, bedlam or paralysis, which is exactly where the House is right now. The Gray Zone's Max Blumenthal noted on X, it was always unreasonable to expect the squad to do to Pelosi what Gates did to McCarthy. They're moved by an aspiration to celebrity lacking in political education and the progressive forces that brought them to power protected them from pressure from Jimmy Dore and others. Uh, you know, it's hard to disagree with that. You know, I was one of the people who really wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt, thinking that maybe they just made a mistake or you know, cow to pressure as uh, junior members of Congress in the beginning and that maybe they'd find their footing and rebound. But all we've seen throughout the entire Biden administration and frankly, through the entire duration of the squad members being in office is that there's a fundamental unwillingness to do anything in, to advance the interests of the people that elected them if it comes at the expense of the party itself. And from the perspective of an outsider insurgent progressive race, which is what they all had, fronted by people like Justice Democrats, the leaders of which have said very clearly the whole point of running these candidates was to get someone within, in Congress with an adversarial relationship to the Democratic Party so they could push it to the left instead of only having people with an adversarial relationship like Manchin and Cinema who push it to the right, you need a counterbalance. That was their job. That was their one job. And when you hear them talking about this Matt Gates situation, they say over and over again, well, they're in disarray. We're in lockstep. I would never do anything to jeopardize the party. Mm. They are saying out loud, loud and clear, they care about the party more than any of the discrete issues some of us were advocating they champion during our own force to vote moment uh, two years ago. And I I'm at least glad it's out in the open. They're being honest. Yeah. You can support them if you like Democrats. They will advance a Democratic Party agenda. But as we know from the Princeton study that I talk about every other day from 2014, there is no relationship between what Congress legislates and what the people want. Hmm. So they're basically admitting that they've abandoned the base that got them into, off into office in the first place. Yeah. And I, I, I do think it's slightly overstating it to say that the Democrats are always in lockstep because, again, talking about that whole force the vote moment, there's a very clear distinction between the rules that Speaker Pelo then Speaker Pelosi had in place and the rules that uh, but, McCarthy but had to agree but to. Not but you had speak then Speaker Pelosi. Pelosi saying, don't embarrass Biden, we have to vote on this, talking about how she's this master negotiator mm -hmm. and all this stuff. But it was still the members of the squad uh, that blocked her from pushing the Biden agenda forward before he went on that trip to Europe, where she was like, we're going to have this done before you take off for Europe. We're going to have this done before Air Force One lands in Europe. And every single time she couldn't do it, despite the president going to Capitol Hill, her again, sort of scolding them, saying, don't embarrass President Biden, which again, I think points to the values. Who are you worried about? You're yes. worried about embarrassing President Biden versus delivering for the American people. Um, but this idea that the Democrats in Congress, specifically the House, have not caused problems. And even to the right, you know, in the Senate, you have Manchin and Cinema, who have caused a lot of problems for Democrats as well. This idea that they're always in lockstep is just not true. The difference is Pelosi had rules that protected her power by not having, again, what Speaker McCarthy had, which was one single member of the House could bring a motion to vacate. And that had all the Democrats pile on. But, but and so of, she she was immune from a lot of the risk that McCarthy had because the, it the took so many is more people. That rule only existed because they forced the vote in January. Mm -hmm. They they got that rule and progressives could have gotten that rule, too, if they had forced the vote. So that rule did not exist mm -hmm. until the Freedom Caucus yeah. said because of the narrow majorities, they, don't have it, a four uh, they only had a four vote majority because of the narrow uh, majorities. We only need a handful of us to say we will not vote for Kevin McCarthy and then we won't have a speaker. That's that's what it was. And to get him to get Kevin McCarthy a speaker, he had to make those concessions. Mm -hmm. He made the concession that any one person can bring a motion to vacate. So that then 
They, they lobbied for more power using this one little moment of power. This is what's so important. This is what, I'm sorry, like this was why force the vote is literally genius. And a lot of these other like force the vote moments, there are bigger things at stake than whether or not someone is Speaker of the House. You can and should, I would argue, uh, threaten to tank the COVID relief uh, bill over whether or not it has a $15 minimum wage in it. You can and should threaten to tank Biden's entire Build Back Better package if it's not meaningful and if it's if it becomes bifurcated, let's say. Mm-hmm. You can and should be willing to do those things. But you do have to then make the argument to the American people why your priority is worth the cost to them of not getting the COVID relief package out or whatever it is. When it comes to the fight over the speakership, it's literally whether a lady nobody liked in Nancy Pelosi, who at poll showed at the time three quarters of Americans wanted to step down, mm-hmm. over whether a lady nobody likes gets a gavel. And in the Speaker McCarthy situation, it's the same thing. How many Americans, gun to their head, could tell you who Kevin McCarthy is? Yeah. I'm guessing fewer than 5%. Hmm. And most of those people are in like a 10 mile radius of where we're sitting right now. (laughs) So at the end of the day, you're sacrificing very little, but it's an opportunity to get power for yourself to then advocate for more things going forward. Mm -hmm. And they did exactly that. They got some movement on getting single issue um, bills voted on. So we have some clarity about what people really believe in and what they just posture to believe in. And they got, importantly, the ability to do this motion to vacate. Progressives could have gotten that too and been in the exact same situation. But at the end of the day, Mama Bear was able to rally the troops either through threatening them, Mm -hmm. um, whatever it is. And we're seeing the same kind of threats happening on the right, right? Mm -hmm. You're seeing all of these establishment Republicans line up on Fox News and saying, we're going to, we got to, we got to challenge every single one of the eight that didn't vote for McCarthy. We got to get them out of Congress next term. They're fundraising against them already. Mm -hmm. Someone tried to, uh, on MSNBC, oh, Caitlin Collins was talking to um, uh, Mace from South Carolina Mm -hmm. uh, saying, you're hypocritical for fundraising off of this after saying it was bad that Kevin McCarthy was fundraising after the first first vote vote moment in January. He's like, it's not hypocritical for me. Mm -hmm. They have explicitly said they're coming for me because I stood up for what I thought was right Mm -hmm. and didn't vote for uh, Kevin McCarthy to be Speaker of the House. So like, they will come for you. And you have to be willing to stand up for that. And it's very clear that the squad members either felt so insecure in their position or so cowed by Nancy Pelosi, or simply just don't have the courage that Nancy Mace has yeah. to stand up for the things that they said were the core motivators for them getting into office in the first place. AOC said, I would rather be a one-term congresswoman than give up on my values. That's not how it has played out. No, I don't think she actually meant that. I think most people, even if they come to Washington with the best of intentions, we see that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Once you end up on one of these committees, you've got the power, you can subpoena people, you can do all this stuff. People are coming to you offering, you know, what do you need in order to vote for this? That just completely eats away at that. And you have, you know, by the time she had been in Congress for a year or two, she has a Tesla parked outside of the Whole Foods owned by Amazon (laughs) in this tower of millennial decadence uh, out uh, down in Navy Yard. Mm -hmm. And so it's very clear that... Most of these people don't actually mean what they say. They're saying what they need to say in order to get elected. Obviously, her upset was stunning for the Democrat establishment. But ultimately, how long did it take her to basically just fall back into that exact same thing? And while I, as a conservative, am all for more Democrats in disarray and people holding Nancy Pelosi or whoever the next Democrat speaker of the House may be, I am all about the chaos and seeing this sort of stuff melt down. Because, again, it ends up just laying bare so much of what I often say is you can't trust the government. The government is not your friend. Let's watch them and see, again, what their values are, what their, as I was talking about Pelosi back when she was speaker, you know, again, her main priority was not embarrassing. Hey, it's Jordan with Status Who Breaking news, Dr. Cornell West is now running for president as an independent candidate, choosing to forego his pursuit of the Green Party presidential nomination. Uh, he originally announced he was running as a People's Party candidate. Uh, that did not last long. Uh, then he announced that he would be pursuing the Green Party nomination. Uh, but now he is choosing uh, to run as an independent, uh, which basically is going straight to the voters uh, rather than 
you know, pursuing a nomination through a party. Let me read for you the statement from his campaign. Uh, recently, Peter Dow, a former Democratic Party uh, supporter, but has evolved now into a third party uh, proponent. Peter Dow recently took over as his campaign manager. And this is the statement from Cornell West campaign. Cornell West is in this race to challenge, challenge the hegemony of the two ruling parties, the corporate duopoly, which oppresses the poor and working class. It is long past time to stop ping-ponging between Republicans and Democrats while millions of our friends and neighbors lack housing, health care, decent jobs, clean air, clean water, nutritious food, and a healthy environment. Democracy means more choices, not backroom deals. It means freedom to vote your conscience without being shamed or bullied. As Dr. West's campaign for president grows, he believes the best way to challenge the entrenched system is by focusing 100% on the people, not on the intricacies of internal party dynamics. Our constitution provides for independent candidates to gain ba ballot access in all states, and Dr. West has begun seeking ballot access as an independent, unaffiliated with any political party. At this, as this movement gains momentum, Dr. West acknowledges and nods in solidarity with the Green Party for their shared values and commitment to justice. So that is a statement from Cornell West's campaign. Uh, I've been on the road on and off for the last 20 days uh, covering the UAW strikes. We are still going to be covering the UAW strikes. Uh, Ron Pacone is going to be on the ground starting tomorrow for us, uh, continuing to cover the UAW strikes. So do not go anywhere. Uh, we will continue to cover the UAW strikes on the ground. And thank you to everybody who has supported that coverage. Uh, if you want to continue to support us, because it's very expensive to be on the ground for over three weeks, sign up as a Status Coup member, statuscoup.com slash join. So I don't have any deep intel in, into this decision. Uh, obviously, running for the Green Party nomination, you're running through a party uh, and a political process, and he would not have been the official nominee. Um, till the convention, which I believe is next spring or summer. Uh, so really running as a Green Party candidate for Cornell West, running as an independent, uh, there is no major difference other than ballot access. Uh, would the Green Party running as a Green Party uh, nominee, would that help him get ballot access in more states uh, versus running as an independent? That I, I really don't know. I believe he could get uh, as much ballot access running as an independent. Uh, Ross Perot, uh, ran back in 92 as an independent and had strong ballot access. Uh, so we will have to see. And obviously, uh, Cornell West is welcome on status quo. And we could ask him about that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if Peter Dow would have been his campaign manager from the beginning, he probably would have ran as an independent rather than pursuing the Green Party nomination. So I don't think it's a massive difference in terms of the type of voters Cornell West would get, uh, how much he would get in terms of the percentage of the vote. I just think this is going straight to the voters, like his campaign said, rather than trying to win a nomination through a party. Uh, in the broader landscape, I do find it interesting, considering obviously RFK Jr. Uh, is going to be announcing, we believe, an independent run uh, next week. Uh, we'll get into that uh, in a minute. But I first want to show you, uh, this is a recent Guardian article uh, with quotes from Cornell West. Um, at a fundraising event in Bus Boys and Poets, a left-wing bookshop and restaurant in D.C., uh, West, a veteran activist of myriad causes, insisted, insisted he seeks the sympathies of neither cohort, but is instead trying to woo alienated, hardened non-voters. Quote, I think that we are not clear if either Biden or Trump will be in the actual election uh, because things are so flexible and fluid right now. He said on being asked by The Guardian to respond to warnings that his candidacy was a boon to Trump. Quote, but I happen to be focusing on the 40 percent that don't vote at all. And I happen to be pulling from the 62 percent of folks who do who do vote, but who would never vote for the two parties. So if there is some taking from both parties, it's going to be very, very small. Quote, I've got to be able to speak the truth no matter what. I'm planning to do what do that until the very end. So in that sense, who knows who's stealing from who? Uh, I think there's quite a few important points here. First of all. Uh, this might be not popular among some. Uh, I think West is right. I, I do not think it's clear at this point if Biden will stay in the race uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, it's not breaking news. If you watch President Biden, uh, he is not in his prime. Uh, that would be a bit of an understatement. 
Um, he has been struggling in, in many ways, uh, regardless of the polling, which is at a really, really dangerous place for an incoming president. His approval rating is low. Uh, his support for his performance on the economy is very, very low, uh, very low for an incumbent. Um, and obviously he, you know, has, the DNC has chosen not to hold a primary because I think they know he would not be able to compete, particularly in debates. Uh, and they would be, it would be exposed uh, that he is not really up to the job physically or mentally. Um, and then you have Trump. Listen, uh, you know, I can't cover the chaos of Trump every day. I know there was recently a gag order against him. There's civil cases, criminal cases. However, uh, as I've said for months, I think in terms of all his legal liability, the one case that has serious uh, legal liability with not a lot of gray area, I, I, I think he is in deep jeopardy of being tried and convicted is the classified documents case, which right now is scheduled to start before the election. Um, I mean, whether you're a Trump supporter or not, it's pretty cut and dry. If you take off your partisan goggles, uh, he withheld you know, classified documents. He obstructed uh, the effort to get them back uh, by all reports. He instructed his staff to move them uh, and hide them against the subpoena. I think uh, even his lawyers at a certain point, they, they don't seem to have a defense. Uh, the Presidential Records Act is not a defense. Uh, so if you study Donald Trump over Let us all that we can to build a better future. There's some breaking news. Uh, this segment was originally going to be about how support for third parties are rising to 63%. And I have an article from The Hill. I have an article from Forbes. And yes, I have an article from The Daily Beast about RFK Jr. running as an independent. Uh, however, again, um, I recently did a segment uh, about RFK Jr. being slandered by David Axelrod and by CNN because, let's face it, the establishment is afraid of a third-party run. When the option of shown or is given to voters of a third-party or fourth-party candidate, um, Biden fails terribly, and Donald Trump is in the lead. But again, I said this before, third-party candidates are not stealing votes. They are earning votes because Americans, again, 50% of this country identifies itself as independent or non-affiliate or third party. And this is the silent majority that must start speaking out. Now, I've interviewed two other candidates who are running in the Libertarian Party. I wish them all the best. And I also did a recent interview with Dr. Cornell West. And the reason why I'm bringing up Dr. Cornell West, especially now, is because he is made an announcement that he is running as an independent candidate. And this was brought up by a good friend of the show, Roger Meadows, um, where Dr. Cornell West uh, put out a press release saying he's dropping green and going independent. As a party abolitionist, I approve this message, F the two-party system, F the parties. So, first of all, uh, if you've been watching Heartlands Media, I've been very consistent about supporting third parties and independence. But, again, the abolition of all political parties is... 100% the best option we can go to. Now, again, will we ever get to that point? Not anytime soon, but through citizen ballot initiatives at the state level, we can call for the absolute abolition of all political parties and thus breaking a good portion of the neoliberal machine. So I want to pull up this video of Dr. Cornell West making this announcement. So let's check it out together. And this came out today. People are hungry for change. They want good policies over partisan politics. We need to break the grip of duopoly and give power to the people. I'm running as an independent candidate for president of the United States and the iron grip of the ruling class and ensure true democracy. Now, again, um, I'm not a fan of his campaign manager, but I do find it interesting now that he is running full on independent. So let's play it. Us. We need you to be part and parcel of wrestling with this corporate duopoly, this two-party system that impedes, it gets in the way of the unleashing of the kind of policies of abolishing poverty and homelessness, of dealing with working wages, cutting back on militarism, and most importantly, trying to ensure that the best of who we are as a people 
can be more manifest, can be more concrete because the crisis is real and these catastrophes are bombarding us. Please come join us. Now, again, this just happened recently and I'm all on board uh, for Dr. Cornell West to say that he's running as an independent um, non-party affiliate. I have to wonder what causes change. Um, and I can only speculate. Now, to be clear here, while I do want to see the Green Party and Libertarian Party succeed, I have to be critical of both parties. Now, to be clear here, again, um, Libertarians, to their credit, have maintained having ballot access. And that's pretty impressive. That's an incredible feat to do, especially with the amount of challenges that are facing third parties. Um, can their overall messaging and organization be more centralized and maybe be more on point and consistent? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, it could. But the Greens, I say this out of love, but the organization is one big shite show. I have never seen so much disorganization ever. All right. And as a political party, it is pretty pathetic. And I'm only speaking about my experiences covering the Greens here in my state of Illinois and in my neighboring state of Indiana. It's been lackluster and mediocre. And I'm being generous and kind with these words because, again, Greens having ballot access has been pretty pathetic. Now, again, both. The libertarians and greens, uh, libertarians more so have ballot access. Greens only half as much as the libertarians. Uh, I believe as it stands right now, uh, 40 states, the libertarians have secured the greens around maybe 18 to 21 states. However, running as an independent, though, it does bring you new challenges and you do have to do the arduous fight of getting ballot access which will be a very difficult chance. If you think libertarians and greens have it bad, non-affiliate independents have to cr climb a lot of mountains, Mount Olympus on steroids. But there is an overall hunger by American voters to want something new. And I want to pull up this article here from The Hill. Support for third party rises to 63%. Now, support for third party in the United States uh, has ticked up to 63% in the latest Gallup poll. Nearly 6 in 10 Americans in the new poll say a third major party is needed because the Republican and Democratic parties do such a poor job <coughs> of representing the people. The figure is a seven-point jump from September when 56% said third party was needed. As it stands right here, we're looking at the graph. That number is going to keep on increasing, even after this election cycle. If you vote Democrat or Republican, I am so sorry. You do not have a seat at the table. More Americans need to wake up to that fact. It's also the highest since Gallup first asked the question in 2003. Though similarly high shares said the same in 2017, 61%, and 2021, 62%, the latter coming just after January 6th, the 2021 riot at the Capitol. Oh, my goodness. How can we all forget that stupid day? The idea of a third major party appears more popular among Republicans than Democrats, with 58% of GOP response saying it's needed. That's up 13 points from last year. A Gallup poll notes that Republicans' perception of whether a third party is needed tends to be very based on whether a Republican or Democrat president is in office, favoring the idea more when a Democrat is in the White House. Democrats and independent stances have been similar under both administrations. Democrats' support for a third party went up six points since last year from 40 to 46 percent. Support among independents has been relatively stable over the last few years and sits at a 75 percent. The poll comes amid frustration on both sides of the aisle with two major parties leadership as President Biden runs for re-election and former President Trump leads the GOP primary field. Poor approval numbers for Biden has heightened some concerns about a third party candidate could impact the 2024 race. Conducted September 1st through the 23rd, the Gallup poll surveyed 1,016 adults and had a margin error of 4% percentage points. And this is fantastic. Look, there is a hunger and need for voters to have something new, to get something new. Now, I know a lot of us are burnt out by electoral politics, but perhaps maybe this is the boost that is needed to inspire others, not only to maybe create independent or third-party organizations, but also...
common arguments we've seen is that the strategy of slowly escalating the strike is smart because it conserves the union's strike fund by having only a fraction of the workers on strike. Part of this argument that's been stated by some is that those who've been laid off during the strike can use unemployment benefits rather than drain the union's strike fund. It's not clear at all, though, how many states even allow this option. As an article from Axios said, quote, uncertainty over unemployment eligibility is rampant, end quote because eligibility will depend on specific state laws and a range of other factors. According to the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, it's also possible striking workers and employees at a company with striking workers may be disqualified from receiving unemployment benefits. According to UAW Region 2B Director David Green, it's as clear as mud. Axios also reports that the union is already using its strike fund for about 600 non-striking workers at Ford's Michigan assembly plant who were temporarily laid off last week when other workers at the plant were called to strike. The UAW has built a strike fund in excess of $800 million, which has been estimated to be enough to last for an all-out strike of about three months. For context, the General Motors strike in 2019 lasted just 40 days. In reality, a militant all-out strike of three months would cost the auto industry bosses tens of billions of dollars and put enormous pressure on them to concede to the union's demands. It could include picketing dealerships, as the UAW threatened to do toward the end of the GM strike in 2019, and potentially bringing out thousands of community supporters. It would mean finding all the remote lots where the stockpiled 80 to 100 day supplies of vehicles are parked, and picketing them to allow Teamster car haulers to honor the picket line by turning around their trucks and going away empty. Also, the amount of money in the strike fund should not be what determines the strategy on the basis of simple arithmetic. If the strike fund really did run short, let's not forget that an impressive 75% of people support the strike. Working people recognize what it would mean for all of us if UAW were to win a 32-hour work week, an end to tears, and pensions and health care for all workers. If the UAW leadership is really worried about the size of the strike fund, they need to put their faith in working people to donate to the cause. The union could set up an appeal tomorrow to raise the funds that are needed. Worker Strike Back would be happy to donate, as would the millions of ordinary working class people who understand what's at stake. In addition, as some of you know, as an elected representative of working people for nearly 10 years, Shama has only taken home the average worker's wage and donated the rest of her six-figure city council salary after taxes into a working class solidarity fund. We are ready to donate from this solidarity fund for the UAW Strike Fund, just as we have done for countless struggles, including the fight to unionize Amazon. An all out, short, sharp strike is completely different from a passive strategy of waiting out the employers, the infamous one day longer strategy, which has failed our movement so many times. The stronger and more militant this strike is, the sooner it can be over, with the workers' demands won. I wanted to give them their, their just due because I love that she's now doing live shows. But welcome to the. Oh, hold on a second. Just due, I've been watching myself. But welcome to the. Today I'm doing You Left Shit Out because it feels like this news about Cornell West, maybe there's a little bit of missing information or at least. There's a missing analysis, which we're going to get to today. But again, just shouting out the On Strike YouTube uh, streaming show now. So you can check them out. This You see it right there in the bottom right-hand corner. They're on YouTube. Uh, it's technically workerstrikeback.net to give you where you can donate. So love that Shama Sawant and um, her co-host, sorry, I forget the name, um, is doing coming directly to people. With the stream so that's awesome and i think it's every thursday yeah right there every thursday at 6 p.m eastern so make sure you check that out but again i'm your host for today i'm cj that stands for compton j or j in real life <clears throat> and i must say it's a doozy today was gonna be my day off but the caveat uh i tell my wife on you know, any of my days off unless some major breaking news uh, drops, and I would say this is sort of major breaking news. Um, but we're gonna have a discussion about this. Um, and I take pride that, um, we on RBN, we sort of all just fell into sort of roles that are important 
but none of it really overlaps. So we work uh, really well. And um, Nick is sort. I'm sorry, Nick is sort of like our nerd, and he says this himself. He's the one I would say probably knowledge wise information in his head on dates and stuff facts he has the most in his head so when we want to debate somebody that's who i would say jb is our compassionate one he covers stories that quite frankly nick and i for example have said that is just too emotionally taxing he covers a lot of those stories and he covers theory then we have our underground our in in the neighborhood guy uh uh rome and then we have the surgeon, the professional surgeon in Sabrina, um, who comes in and just uh, tactically, but professionally and politely picks you apart. And then um, I'm sort of the righteous uh, anger guy, which also bleeds into uh, the guy that's willing to have conversations of the topics that nobody wants to talk about. So I feel like I play that role and I um, I don't mind playing that role. I don't mind going out and taking the hits because of a conversation that needed to be had, like the conversation, a critique of the Cornell West camp selecting Peter Dow. So um, this is another one of those where we um, as real, let's stop using real. We as people who are serious about radical change not fringe changes um none of that is going to be accomplished if we don't have these conversations so that's what we're going to have today and i'm genuinely um asking because i would say i'm 60 40 on this decision 40 percent thinking this is good 60 percent thinking this is bad um during this stream i could be persuaded to be 50 50 or to even lean more to this is good and we're going to have that discussion today i'm just going to pose a couple of questions that's in the description box that we're going to be kind of talking about uh today uh and you know i'm going to go to twitter we're going to pull up a bunch of, of things but cornell west runs as independent um and the first question i have is now in the title i had to cut it short but the full question in the title it says is this a pro-democrat party decision but if you go to the description you'll see our full titles <laughs> for, for segments and it says the full title is is this a pro-democrat party decision or a pro-movement decision because i guess there could be an argument for both on this so we we would have to dis, we'll have to see but it doesn't and i would think why that's what i'm on 50 50 pro democrat pro movement i'm on a 50 i'm right now i'm looking at this as, as a 60 percent. this is a pro democrat sort of move and i think and i think the logical thing that tips the scale for me is the selection of peter dow that is what tips the scale even if it's a slight tipping but that's what tips the scale for me, that I have um, undeniable proof in Peter Dow being the campaign manager, a person who is a, is a life, he's been a Democratic shield longer than he's been in the role that he is now. Let's put it that way. So you can say he's changed. Let's say he's changed for the last three years, but he was a lot, he was a, he was a terrible Democratic shield for a lot longer than that. So um, that's kind of what tips the scale for me. And then um, this is how I analyzed this when I first heard the news. Um, and I tweeted this to my RBN members. I said, because I honestly didn't know. I said, does running as an independent give you more ballot access? Because I didn't know. Because for me you're either this is a strategic move it's either a strategic move to help the democrats by removing yourself from so many ballots that you're going to be guaranteed to be on by simply by running through the apparatus of the democrat of the uh, green party uh uh green party 
Or is this a movement decision because there's some people maybe in Trump country that would be turned off by even you running as a green? And there's some even leftists who are turned off as you running as a green. So is this is an appeal to get to that? Now, are you now let's say let's go down that route. Now, this is a movement decision. A movement decision that gets you more people onto your movement, but gives you less access through the electoral system. We can have a debate on that. But for us, for anybody on either side, whether you think this is a good decision or not, for you to be just like all in on either side, I don't think you're being intellectually honest about it without serious analysis on this. Because there is, there, this is not a, yes, it's good. Because there's good things. Running independent, he's not tied to any apparatus. He's on his own. It's him with the voters. Let's take it to the, to the ruling class. That's all good. People don't feel that there's some sort of uh, apparatus that could shape who the candidate is. And that can be any party. It doesn't have to be Democrat or Republican. It can be the Green Party that does that. Um, but again, we, we, you, you can analyze a decision like this without the names and come up with an answer of this could be a good decision as a movement. But when you insert the players, you are being intellectually dishonest. If you do not re-examine that and say, wait a minute, Cornell West was just pushing Trump is bad three years ago. And in his language, even now running as a green, up until this point running as a green, some of his language was still reflecting Trump derangement. Trump bad, Trump bad, he's worse. No, he's not. And then the selection of Peter Dow, we cannot look at this, this move without without a magnifying glass on the selection of Peter Dow and subsequently this happening. So, you know, that's to me is the framing. Um, what's up, darling? Yes. It, the, did you get your mouse right here? It's right here. Take your sister down with you, too. Sorry. <laughs> so my two uh, daughters are uh, home. Um, yeah, I won't say why. Yeah, because she might not want me to say that. But anyway, this is what my daughters are home. Anyway, so let me actually bring this down. Let's start to go to some of the content because mainly... A lot of, I'm not going to say mainly, a lot of what we're going to be doing is just simply going through the reaction. There's so much reaction about this. Of course, we're going to play the video now. If you were watching before we got started, when before we get started, so today we'll start at 2 p.m., but I usually try to start the, the live stream 30 minutes before I actually come on the show, not just play like videos to keep you occupied until the show starts. So I play the video, um, Heartlands and... Uh, Status quo. Cool. So I believe, believe they've already played this, but if you haven't seen that, then this is your first time watching it. So this is him technically making the announcement. Uh, let's listen uh, to Cornell. Oops, I'm in the wrong screen. This one. Yes, we need you to be part and parcel of wrestling with this corporate duopoly, this two-party system that impedes, it gets in the way of the unleashing of the kind of policies of abolishing poverty and homelessness, of dealing with working wages, cutting back on militarism, and most importantly, trying to ensure that the best of who we are as a people can be more manifest, can be more concrete, because the crisis is real and these catastrophes are bombarding us. Please come join us. So none of what he says in the video excludes running as a green. 
So let's read what he wrote in the caption of the video. I think he explains it a little more. Oops. And then we'll look at some other items here. Let's see. Um, actually, let me blow it up for everybody to see. People are hungry for change. They want good policies over partisan politics. We need to break the grip of the duopoly and give power to the people. I'm running as an independent candidate for president of the United States to end the iron grip of the ruling class and ensure true democracy. Now, you know what's ringing in my head right now? I'm a jazz man. I improvise. Is going from the Green Party, going from the People's Party to the Green Party to now an independent, does this, is this an indication of that ability to ad lib being a jazz man, or this is an indication of bad decision making? So you're trying to correct it. Um, okay. All right. So let's, let's go to some other reaction here. I'm trying to be positive. Oh, let's go to here. J Jordan Sheraton here. Cause he has a clip from the actual, uh, announcement breaking Cornell West will run as an independent president as an independent for president dropping his bid for Green Party nomination from his campaign. Let's blow this up. It says, Cornell West is in this race to challenge the hegemonic hegemony of the two ruling parties, which oppresses the poor and working class. It is time to stop ping-ponging between Republicans and Democrats while means of friends and neighbors lack housing, health care, Decent jobs, clear, clean air, clean water, nutri nutritious, excuse me, nutritious food and healthy environment. I'm going to pause here. None of that. This could be the same speech if he was running as green. So I, I still haven't heard a reason why why the change. But we're going to get to a Dr. Uh, Jill Stein uh, statement that was made right before the show started. Uh, democracy means more choices, not backroom deals. It means it is, or is that a reference to the Green Party? Is that what that's supposed to be? Not backroom deals. It means freedom to vote your conscience without being shamed or bullied. As Dr. West's campaign for president grows, he believes the best way to challenge the I think that's entrenched system is by focusing 100% on the people, not the entrenched intricacies of an internal party dynamic. So I think this is the part where there, because I don't know the details of this Green Party just corruption that people sort of use, refer to. Um, and for me, the reason I just never really uh, focused in on it is because. I'm, if I'm hearing the same language, so for example, if I'm hearing the same language about that pe people on the left are using the same language to describe a person who robs the local liquor store as to describe a person who robs millions from homeowners, like that's problematic to me. And I'm almost not interested in even hearing your arguments. And to me, that was the case for the Green Party. It's like, yeah, it can have corruption. But if you're trying to, uh, people were literally saying, oh, this just is where, and I was like, I, I got, yeah, I, I got a problem with that then. I got a problem with even going down that path with you with the argument, if you're going to say that. If you're going to say the guy who's robbing a local liquor store is the same as the guy who's robbing millions of people, I, I just, I can't get with that. I can't get with that. But maybe that's what this is uh, referring to. Our Constitution provides for independent candidates to gain ballot access in all states. And Dr. West has begun seeking ballot access as an independent, unaffiliated with any political party. As this movement gains momentum, Dr. West acknowledges and nods in, in, in solidarity with Green Party and for their shared value and commitment to justice. Okay. 
Okay, let's stay positive, everybody, and report this just facts only. But so let's look at some reaction here. And it's some good, some bad. I tried to get one or two good and one or two bad. This is Comrade Misty. This campaign is a mess. So maybe she has the same uh, a, a, a an interp the same interpretation as one of the ones I, I described, which is this is either an indication that you are flailing because you have bad decision makers in the behind the scenes and you don't really know what you're doing strategic wise. It could appear that way or it could appear a different way like this. And here is um, Nico House. And he says, all right. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, this is interesting because they're, these two have similar politics. I wouldn't say exact, similar politics. And um, I don't know if Nico classifies himself as libertarian, but I know he is libertarian friendly. Like he, he is comfortable in those settings and people, libertarians are comfortable with him. So... This is what I was speaking to earlier. If this is a movement decision, is it a movement decision to get people like Nico House, who would who has a who would have a problem with voting for somebody or supporting somebody who's part of the Green Party? So is this a move to for that? Well, I guess we can come back to the ballot access question. Um, and here's here's uh, Peter Dow uh, saying here's the announcement from Peter Dow. Cornell West is running as an independent. There is no true democracy in America when two ruling parties actively work to prevent voters from having choice. Would you accept a restaurant with only two rotten items on the menu? Of course not. Jeez. Fight for justice by fighting. The duopoly. And that's his uh, reaction. Or that's uh, what Peter Dow says. In the statement. Now, um, let, before I go to Dr. Jill Stein's reaction, and, and Dr. Jill Stein will be on the Savvy Sab show tonight. So uh, maybe she'll address some of the, any other lingering questions after I read you the... Um, statement she makes because this is a statement and it sounds like a statement of departing and not necessarily coming together that's what it sounds like to me but I'll, let me go to do dissidents um now when i sent the message to my rbn brothers and sister sabby or sabrina i like to call her sabrina um i had not read the do dissidents tweet yet I had not read it. So um, I had said what I said to my members, I, you know, because I carry, I really didn't know. And, I, and we're still going to analyze the question. Do you, do you, is it an advantage to get more ballot access as an independent compared to as a green? Meaning, are there less hurdles for a person who's running independent, not tied to a party to get on the ballot? Meaning, if you, for example, you have to be, you have to have certain amount of people support. I forget the what the threshold, but you have to meet certain criteria in order to be considered a a a party in a state, right? So would there be more hurdles because he's running as a green and a party? There's party hurdles along with candidate hurdles, but if you're running only as an independent. Is there only candidate hurdles? And that's less. So that's why I said this is not cut and dry for anybody. It's just I'm a, I'm 100 percent yes, I'm 100 percent no. No, you're not. If you are, you're you haven't sat down to take the time to really analyze some of these questions. And it's the answer to what I'm saying here. Is it he could get more ballot access? That's not the same thing as it being probable. Plausible and probable is not the same thing. Because just saying as he, he could, yeah, I guess if, you know, he was able to raise, you know, $20 million every single month 
If he was able to get some TV ads on, you get what I'm saying? Like, yes, there's a lot of in 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 that yes answer. Um, but let's go to do dissonance. Like I said, I didn't read their tweet before I had already um uh come up to what I, the questions I already had, and then I came up on their tweet. It says translations. The Greens have too much ballot access, and I and I might cost Biden the presidency if I stick with them. So I'm effectively bowing out. This goes to the point about what I was saying earlier. I think whether or not this is real, whether or not. Let me say it a different way. This is a valid point that do dissidents brings up. And you might ask, well, do dissidents or some people, and I don't, I'm not sure if do dissidents did this, so I won't say them, but um, there's some people on the left that will say, I was, I'm all for RFK Jr., running independent but then they hear this news and it's like what this is terrible let me explain how that could be going from a terrible corporatist duop duopoly party to an independent run is better that is literally better you're 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 saying i'm not participating in this corporate capitalist duopoly and i'm running as an independent Cornell West as a green was already there outside of the duopoly and running with the party that had ballot access when, when, when in 2016, when Joe Stein ran, I think they got into 44 States with 48 being, if it, if it included right. And I believe something like that, 44 to 48. And at minimum, I believe some of the targets I've seen with the green party would be in like 38 States, 35 States minimum with the potential of being in more. So going from green to independent could be bad. This is why I said the whole question sort of hinges on this has increased his ballot access. If it does not, objectively, this would be a worse decision strategically, wouldn't it? That's why the critique would be different for RFK going from Democrat to independent, then Cornell West going from Green Party to independent. The Green Party is already outside of the duopoly. The Democratic Party is not. I would say RFK moving from independent right now, and if he went to Green, I would say that would be a better decision for him if he's talking about access to ballots that's that's really what we're talking about here and i think maybe that's what divides people's different opinions is what is the priority to you is it ballot access or something else is it ballot access or the ability for to open the ears of more people to hear the message of cornell west so it's really about what do you think is a priority so let me let me see if maybe i bel belabored the point is there any other? There's not. So then let's go back to Dr. Jill Stein's uh, announcement or statement, I should say. Let's see if I got I got a text. There's so many breaking information I need to add to this. Oh, thank you, Zoya. Zoya did send me. Let me see which Zoya sent me here. Okay. So, yeah, this is what I'm reading. So, wow. Wow. This is actually a statement from Jill Stein and Barack. I'm sorry, Ajamu Baraka. So I'm not sure this is a good sign. I'm not sure this is a good sign. Breaking, Stein and Baraka 
wish Dr. Wes well a firm support for a strong green campaign. Boston. I think they're in Boston, maybe. That's why she's in there. Jill Stein and Ajamu Baraka, previously advisors to the West campaign, they're not any longer. Today, wish Cornell West well in his upcoming independent presidential campaign in the following joint statement. Now, let me just pause here. Regardless of the issue, let's take the issue that we're talking about away. We're no longer talking about Green Party. We're no longer talking about Cornell West and what party he's running with. We're just simply talking about advisors on foreign policy politics. Would you rather be getting advised by Peter Dow? Or would you rather be getting advised by Ajamu Baraka and Dr. Jill Stein? This is why I'm leaning 60-40. And where is Chris Hedges in all of this stuff? Has there been any sightings of Chris Hedges? We must have level heads when making analysis. So again, like I said, I'm not a hundred percent. I'm just saying I'm 60, 40. I'm 60, 40. <laughs> on, on Ukraine war, who would you rather advising you? Dr. Jill Stein in conjunction with Ajamu Baraka or Peter Dow? When it comes to attacking the duopoly, who would you rather advising you, Ajamu and Jill or Peter? And where's Chris Hedges? <laughs> but let's read the rest of the... Uh... Jesus. Quote, as colleagues who helped persuade Dr. West to pursue the Green Party nomination, we appreciate the good faith effort he has made over the past four months. Running solo, however, may better suit his longstanding role as a fiercely independent voice of moral authority. While we share Dr. West's formidable commitment to peace and justice, we are respectively parting ways at this juncture as we are committed to building an independent people's power party as an indispensable vehicle for challenging empire and oligarchy for long, for the long haul. Why couldn't Ajamu and Dr. Jill Stein stay on as advisors, even as an independent run, unless they felt they disagreed so much? Sort of like some of us disagree with the selection of Peter Dow. So Cornell West jumps in this race under the People's Party campaign or, or apparatus, which is laughable and corrupt and ran by a a uh, a ghoulish court jester in Nick Brana. Um, and the critiques that, what, does he not know about them? He's going on different interviews. They're bringing up, hey, do you know this about the People's Party? So he kind of looks like uh, he doesn't know exactly what he's doing or he's not engaged enough to know what's happening. Then 
Then he moves to the Green Party. And then people go, wow, this is a freaking good decision. Even the professional managerial cast left, class left starts to come out throwing, uh, throwing smears at him because he's going to fuck up their Democratic Party vote blue or matter, matter new, uh, who nonsense. And they're writing all types of articles about him running as a green. Does this decision give the ruling class relief or not? I say this gives them release, relief. Even if this is a decision to move to build a movement. Let's say this is not has any nefariousness to it. It's just I, I'm making this decision to build a movement. It's still giving a sigh of release to the establishment because you're not gonna be guaranteed to be on some swing states. I think Wisconsin, Michigan, and there's another one I'm missing. And they could have got on another one, Ohio and or Florida as they pursued more access through the Green Party. But then to go here, we're going to do this. Oh, he's effectively taking himself off of ballots in swing states. Will he get on, and this, is, this will be another telling sign, with this campaign right now running as independent, will he get on ballots in swing states? If he doesn't get on ballots in swing states, is there any other proof here? Is there any other proof as he doesn't get on ballots in swing states? It's not looking good. Like I said, I'm still 60-40 because I want to give benefit of doubt of time and let things develop. This is not looking good from the selection of Peter Dow. Now look at what has happened. You move in Peter Dow, the used car salesman, and you kick out the revolutionaries. Ajamu Baraka, Jill Stein. But I'm, it's curious to hear. I wonder if Jill Stein will address this tonight on Savvy Sab show. She picked Peter Dow, and now Peter Dow is kicking him out. Remember her statement. She selected Peter Dow. She's the one who brought him to this campaign, and now Peter Dow is kicking her out. Now, I'm not saying... I mean, effectively kicking her out. It could be constructively, not meaning um, he's not saying you get out, but it's constructive, a decision that is being made that constructively says to her, I got to get the fuck out of here. This is a lot. This is a lot. This is a lot. This is a lot. But let's continue. Um, they're parting ways. Here's another quote. In light of Dr. West's decision to run independent, we are in discussion with several former candidates about potentially entering the race to carry the Green Party anti-war pro-worker uh, climate emergency agenda in this critical election. Dr. Jill Stein, um, Ajamo Baraka, what do you think of Claudia De La Cruz running on your ticket in, in, in states? That she can't get on under the PSL. What do y'all think about that? The PSL. What does the PSL think about that? Sort of a, a in conjunction. W would you be open? Let me say it this way. With the PSL, would you be open with your candidate running as a green in other states that you do not have ballot access on? Uh, the, the 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 chat is on fire with some great comments. I'm gonna get to it. I, I see all of some of you guys' great takes on this. I'm gonna get to it in a minute. So, um, but let me read the rest of this, and then I'm gonna get to some comments from all of you and some super chats. Um. Oh, did I read that all the way through? My bad. Hold on. Did I read? All no, I did not. Okay, sorry. As colleagues who help persuade. Oh, no, I did read that. My bad. This is the part I should be reading. With the Democratic Party now leading the charge for war and censorship, 
betraying workers on the rail uh, on the rail strike and dropping the fifteen dollar minimum wage, outdoing Trump is new fossil fuel project on public lands and voluntarily resuming crushing student uh, uh, debt payments when people are barely scraping by paycheck to paycheck. For all these reasons and more, we need an independent, corporate free people's party for, I'm sorry, party more than ever. And then she continues in deciding to run as an independent, the campaign, the West campaign leaves behind the ballot lines they would have had access to, as well as the guidance of experienced ballot access staff and green volunteer. Familiar with the process in most of the 50 states, we expect this to be a formidable obstacle obstacle in the coming months. So I think we're getting the answer here. I did not read this statement ahead of time. I just saved it. I'm sorry, I read the first paragraph. I did not read all of the statement ahead of time. So all of what I was saying about ballot access, ballot access, that's what this really is about is answered right here. And this is why they had to jump off of this nonsense, and I'm calling it nonsense at this point, of switching to independent. Because even movement building, I would I would say to you, it's better to be on the people's on the uh Green Party uh ballot line because the movement grows if you are on the ballot in more states. For example. Uh, if if Claudia uh, De La Cruz is not on the ballot in Missouri or Kansas, yeah, Kansas, Missouri where Nick is, she's not on the ballot there. So her movement is restricted in Missouri from growing as much as it could because she is not a candidate for those people in Missouri to support. So remaining on the Green Party would have given you, would have been better for the movement beyond 2020, 2024 also. Let's, let's continue to read. This is, let's continue to read. Um, Though Dr. West won't be running with our team, he is offering an inspired, courageous example to voters and candidates alike we believe he is making an immeasurable contribution to the 2024 election. And for that, we are deeply grateful. Given our similar visions and agenda, we continue to look for a synergy on the road ahead. Zoya, I need you to reach out to Ajamu Baraka. I would love to have him come on to the show. Um, maybe a joint interview with Ajamu and Dr. Jill Stein. I would love to have Shama Sawant. So as far as guests we want to invite, those are our top priority um, moving forward. We we have got to get in conversation um, with our comrades here. Uh, this, this statement is not good. Uh, as far as if you're talking about this is a good decision for him to go independent. So I think I'm moving my meter up to 70%. So I'm now at 70, 30, that this is a bad decision. Um, and uh, Jill Stein has been through this process and Ajamu Baraka and what they're saying about how it's going to be tough. Now understand the way she's putting this is the professional managerial class being nice and professional about a public statement. Translation, this is a fucking terrible decision, Dr. Cornell West. You're going to lose so much ballot access and not going to be as effective as you could be running as a green. That's what she's saying to him. And the fact that Ajamu Baraka is on board with saying this statement says a lot. You go from Nick Brana to Peter Dow. That's the same person. 
No, let me say it this way. You go from you go from court jester one and Nick Brana to great radicals like Ajamu Baraka, Chris Hedges, and Dr. Jill Stein to court jester two and Peter Dow. Like I said, the political instincts of Dr. Cornell West are highly suspect. Highly suspect. Dr. Cornell West can speak beautifully and analyzes the ruling system quite well. Period. End of story. How many examples of terrible political decisions do we need to hear before we can make that assessment? The selection of the People's Party without knowing what the hell's going on, that's one. The selection of Peter Dow, that's two. The refusal to equate Joe Biden as the same as Donald Trump, or at least the Democrats as the same as, Rep as Republicans, that's four. And now switching out advisors taking on Peter Court Jester Dow, which constructively removes Ajamu Baraka. Let's just take P uh, uh, Dr. Jill Stein. Cornell West, you're removing a black radical? This is highly suspect. Let's go to Super Chats first. This is highly suspect, though. Um, Yazim Miller, $3 sticker. Thank you so much for that. This one from Sam. Uh, thank you for the super chat. This is so effing lame. Wes already threw in the towel to actually challenge the dim on ballot, but we might get Nico's approval. How <laughs> exciting. You're saying Nico House. Um, and here, James Bletcher, I think that's a, or Belcher, sorry. I switched the L and the E when I read it. And I think that's called dyslexia, which I've never been formally diagnosed. But every time when I'm reading and somebody said, a teacher, they'll say, oh, yeah, that sounds like dyslexia, a form of it. Um. Depending on how West campaign plays with worker strike back, they could be simpatico. West supporters would have a place to go after 2024. Thank you, James Belcher, for that. And now let's get into some of your comments. One second. Let me turn on my air conditioning. Okay, it's 90 some odd degrees in California today. So I'm sitting near my window and the heat is sweating through. Oh, it's 90 where I'm at right now. So the heat is sweating through the window. So I have to turn my air on. Yeah. It's, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, so let's, let's get to some of your comments here. Um... Oh, let's let's uh, read. I'm, I'm going to screen some of these uh, just to make sure we're on topic mainly. Um, so let's answer this question. It says, why do you care? You said you were out of the Dr. West Cornell West campaign uh, weeks ago. Come on now. Uh, I'm not, I'm going to I'm going to read this and answer this without an attitude, even though that's what you're asking me with an attitude. I'm trying to be a little calmer, calmer. Um, now, I'm going to be calm in my tone, but maybe what I'm saying is going to hit you. Um, this is such a intellectually infantile argument or statement. Because. Um, what does me supporting a candidacy have to do with an analysis of what's going on? There's two different things. 
you see there's this thing called a brain and you see things and you give what you think is happening for other people to hear and they bounce their analysis off of you. Now, if you're accustomed to something else where you only speak about the people you support, that's you and do you, boo-boo. Do you, nobody's stopping you, but do you, okay? Let's continue. Um, I wonder. Man, Wes has no principles. He is wet finger in the wind. It is what he follows. It feels, and, and he was telling us this, but maybe we didn't really understand what he was saying. He was tazy. He's been telling, I'm a jazz man. I'm a jazz man. Improvise. You mean you can't stick to a decision? That's how he's describing this. This ain't no improvising. This is going from terrible decision after terrible decision. So is this what he's referring to when he says, I'm a jazz man? I remember Cornell, 1L, maybe that's a typo uh, spell check because I get the same thing, and Bill Marshall, and he ultimately part, and he's ultimately part of the club. I would like to see that clip. I, I don't think I've ever seen that. They are all just collecting funds from unsuspecting people. This one here, Wes has convinced to scuttle his campaign those who enjoy high levels of traditional success will always be susceptible towards pressure from the bourgeoisie. That's why need someone more outsider. That's why we need a working class person. Because as much as somebody in the professional managerial class can be down, they're just not exactly the same. And let's continue here. We've been trying to coordinate something with them for a while. I had reached out to them a long time and they didn't respond for a while. And then when they finally did, I couldn't coordinate it. And then a year or more, past, this has been a while we, uh, we've been dealing with them. But I think Nick said he's been trying to get something together with them. So, And it says, CJ, please interview the Green Party Black uh, Caucus about Wes dropping. Oops. The Greens. So that could be on the political horizon. On the horizon, I'm sorry. Schedule horizon. Uh, Cornell is politically naive. That's true. Just as at all the academic, this is why listening to people like Dow is dangerous. Yes, that is a good point. And Dow is a salesman. And I'm telling you, Dow is leaning on the him being a musician. I can guarantee you. In these conversations that Dow is, is convincing Cornell West about things, I'm guaranteeing you he's using musical analogies. He's taught, he's using different uh, uh, musician names. You know, he's going in, Charlie Parker. Yeah, you coming in, Charlie Parker, you're doing this. And he, you got Benny Goodman over here. You got, you know what I'm saying? He's using names to convince him. Yeah. See here. Cornell West is a good man, but that is not good enough. Good men are good for neighbors, not for what is necessary right now. And that could be the case. And we could that could be what we are seeing right now. Um, and oh, do dissidence is here. What's up, fellas? Jill and Ajamu didn't want him to leave, which backs up my theory that he chickened out. He left the Greens because they had too much ballot access. Thank you for the super chat. So Rus oh, uh, Russell, my, to the good fellas over there, Russell and Keaton, uh, do dissonance. This is... Them, so like, and the thing is, I'm not sure, and maybe, wait, hold on, hang on a second.
Oh, get, I saw I saw your tweet, Savvy. Damn, <laughs> I saw your tweet, Savvy. All right. Um, go ahead. Let me refocus here. All right. So back to the due dissidence super chat. Um, before I came on, so the news has dropped. All this stuff is going on. Cornell West. Cornell West. I decide to go live, prepare, and then I make the announcements. Not soon after that, maybe 30, 40 minutes, that's when Jill Stein makes her announcements. No, 30, 40 minutes before I'm going to come on, she makes her announcement. And if I didn't have this to put this decision in context, I would be still kind of like not knowing just simply because I don't have any sort of validation. But the statement from Jill Stein is validation that to me, this was a bad decision and that to me, he's moving away from the people that would give him more sort of radical advice to Peter Dow. Like this is, I'm trying to think of a person who would be worse than Nick Brana or at the same level. If you ask that question, okay, Nick Brana is seen as your campaign manager. Um, because you're running with the People's Party, who could be worse than Nick Brana? Maybe Debbie Washerman Schultz, but I'm telling you, Peter Dow would absolutely be up there. Um, and maybe he is chickening out because you know what he's getting? He's getting all of his his classmates writing articles about him. The David Corns, the uh, David Ignatius, all these people, all these establishment people who usually fawn after him, going on shows, they're attacking him. This is something different for a person who has lived his life as some people that more, more, so, more or so or less who look up to him. You got the establishment coming after you. So would you be more persuadable to not be so adversarial by running through the Green Party? There's no way to spin this at this point. So I'm 70 30 here. Let's go to the next super chat here. I had a dream last night. Kennedy West. Yes, damn hot here in SoCal, California. Yes, it is hot as hell. Yeah, Kennedy West, I don't think they will run because kids, because uh, together, because. I don't think Wes would run some, with somebody who is a Zionist on the ticket. I don't think he would do that. Um, but then let's 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 go with that hypothetical further. Let's put this up here. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. Let's go with this hypothetical further. This would inspire a lot of people. Where would that inspiration go without valid access? Where would that information go? Or, I'm sorry, where would that inspiration go without ballot access? This is this is not looking like this is a good decision. This isn't looking like a decision that's made uh, to address one of the questions. So let's go back to some of the questions I said ahead. Is this a pro-Democrat uh, party decision or a pro-movement decision? Now that we had time to sort of discuss, let's go to the chat. So what say you? Is this a pro-Democrat? Is he is he being removed so he he challenges the establishment green and red, I'm sorry, blue and red less so that he still can have a little bit of fun and go to brunch with his professional managerial class in academics? I can't imagine, I think we can throw this as movement building off the table. How can you say this, move, this, this is movement building when you, this decision causes Dr. Jill Stein and a black, a black fellow black radical, Ajamu Baraka, to leave the campaign? How is it movement building? The last two major decisions of the Cornell campaign are opposite of movement building. Would you say? 
opposite of movement building. If your decision is causing people to lose your campaign or leave your campaign, wouldn't you call that a bad decision? This gives less because 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 there's a fear he's going to he's going to pull a lot of black people away from the duopoly. Will he with this decision? If black people don't have the ability to vote for him in a state, how does he do that? For Michigan, for example, on the Greens, that is a swing state. He will be on the ballot. Black folks, if they're fearful, I'm, I'm saying black folks because we're talking specifically about them being fearful of Cornell West taking black voters. But this decision he's making is effectively more, I would say, cutting uh, access by for black voters to actually vote for him by probably 75 percent. So, again, how can we. How can we not have an analysis that critiques this as a pro-Democratic Party decision if all the resulting sort of things that happen from your decision helps the Democrats? How is that not our analysis? Regardless if we like Cornell West, we have to be intellectually consistent and honest. What positive what are, are there any positive repercussions of decision for this of uh, uh repercussions from this decision positive repercussions for the democratic party and joe biden's candidacy it's just let me restart my phone new software Here's another uh, super chat here. Sister, so yeah, I'm going to find that sister soldier. Sister soldier called this out about West ages ago. West loves the system, but claims to fight against it. Some people for decades have been trying to warn, to warn about, to warn us about this from West. He's a system product. That is a good point, and thank you for the super chat. I'm going to keep that up because I do, I do want to go to sister. Now this is a this is a, a video I used to tweet over and over and over and over and over and over again for years. I was tweeting this video or the content. He was on the Donahue show. Um. Oh wow. Somebody took it off of Twitter, but that's fine. Um, we got it on uh, YouTube, and I'm gonna. I think I'm. I think I do want to bring. So I did find a video. I was just quiet to make sure this was the right video here. So no. So I found the video here. Let's 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 bring it up. Um, and I'm gonna leave your super chat up here because you refer to it. And um, let's do that. Uh, Sister Soja, Sister Soja. Here we go. Now I I kind of fast forwarded to a point where you can hear, you can see uh, Cornell West interacting more. Um, I, there's a probably two or three clips from this five minute video that are separate clips that I used to post. So I'm gonna play what one of those clips used to consist of here is one of them right here. African in America, 
or in Latin America, or in the Caribbean, or in the continent, you will be hunted no matter what you do, because they do not want us to survive and become self-sufficient. Well, and you can say no, but you haven't lived right this life. You haven't lived this life. I think that they to be happy. We we wanna, food I'm just talking food about food. that. All right. Okay. Now, to paraphrase Senator okay. Bradley of uh, New Jersey, the uh, state from which you, you're Okay, hang on a second here. Yeah, he is going to be talking here. Let's listen he's to Carl. Senator Bradley gets much right when he talks. Uh, well, he does, and he, among other things, and he's not claiming to be particularly original with the observation, we can't get there unless we go together. I have a terrible feeling that behind me are some people who do not agree. Senator, <laughs> Senator, 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 Senator Bradley of the all-white United States Senate said... We this is the clip right here. This is the clip right here. Together. Sorry. None of us are this is where it began. That's number one. Number two, you're making an, a moral appeal mm -hmm. to a country that doesn't have a moral conscience. Right. The question becomes that when white people feel serious and angry and upset about abortion, they come out in the thousands up to the millions to say, this is what we believe about abortion. Where is the white outcry against white racism that murders African people all around this entire globe? It doesn't exist. So who are these white good people? I want to meet them. I want to I see know them. I will not enough. But that's why that, 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 that might hold be. Hold on, easy. everybody. <laughs> I mean, no, no. And guess what? I don't work with. Hold on a second. I think I have a special guest. I just noticed you here, Keaton. Didn't see you, sir. Let me introduce Keaton from Do Dissonance. You know what, Keaton? I was going to invite you, but I was like, I could swear on, I could swear that he was probably going to do his own show, and I didn't want to step on you giving your, your opinion here before your show, but welcome, Keaton. No. Glad you were able to join. What's up, sir? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you. I didn't mean to crash your show. I just, I messaged you because I was super chatting. I was watching while I was doing landscaping at my kid's daycare. My kid's nursery school is a co-op. So mm -hmm. I was on landscaping duty today. So I saw, right you know, you saw, you saw my tweet. And so I figured I'd offer to come on for a few minutes. I don't, but you know, do your, like, I don't mean to crash yeah. your show. No, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's good that you came on because I, you and I had messaged after, after I had messaged with the RBN guy, uh, the crew, I had messaged you and Kit, like, just what are you guys are, are thinking? What are some of the same things? Um, I'll let you divulge what you said in the chat and sort of further explain. But why do you have this take? Independent, I don't know how much of the show you watch, because I want to hear if your reasons are different or slightly different. Um, why do you come to the conclusion you come to about this decision to go uh, go independent? Well, I, I've watched I watched almost your whole thing. The only parts I missed were when the lawnmower was running and it was too loud. I couldn't hear. <laughs> Other than that, I caught the whole thing. Um, right on. Yeah, no, look, I mean, the reason you hit the nail on the head when you said that, you know, for RFK to switch from Democrat to independence a good is a good move because he's breaking from the mm -hmm. duopoly. Corner West was already outside of the duopoly with the Greens. And he was outside the duopoly in a way that made him more competitive. Like the ultimate d choice here is, does this move make you more or less competitive? And I wish I could see a world in which this made him more competitive, but I don't see that. The Greens have an infrastructure. They have ballot access. It's unclear how much ballot access they have. Some people say they're on 40 states. Some people say they're on 20. Right now, Cornell is starting from scratch again. He's got to build this out. He now has to pick and choose which states he seeks ballot access in. And I'm predicting right now that they are going to choose states to pursue access that are not swing states. I don't think he's going to pursue ballot access in Georgia or Pennsylvania or Michigan or Wisconsin. I don't see that. I think this decision was made because he got cold feet. And look, the signaling was there from day one with all the, you know, Trump's a neo-fascist and all this stuff. And mm -hmm. you guys asked him when you first interviewed him, you know, you endorsed Biden last time. You seem to be very fearful of a second Trump term. And so these decisions are ultimately consistent with that. He's making himself less competitive. That's the bottom line, you know. And, you know, I went back and forth with Sabby a bit and, you know, love Sabby. Uh, can't wait to watch her interview with Jill Stein <laughs> later this Wait, evening. you did? Oh, 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 okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Which is, she this went is back a healthy, I mean, it was this fine. Is a healthy we didn't, debate. We didn't, yeah, it's not. It's yeah, not, we, we didn't, not, we didn't not, uh, go at each other. At all, but, nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. But let's no, see her no, pushback. And let's, and I'm, I'm curious to know what, what your response was. And, I, and sure. I'll read that. And it says, actually, the platform is way better now. The more candidates running independent, the better, in my opinion. Also, remember, RFK is also running um, independent, but the more candidates. The more candidates running, the platform is better. So let me, because I haven't read. I have to be honest. I haven't read the platform, so I don't know if it's changed. The platform is um, more thorough not. now. With the greens, it was like they hired a fifth grader to write the platform on the web. So it was like four paragraphs. It was like a book report when you didn't read the book. So it's much more thorough now. Okay, that's great. But the bottom line is, are you more competitive? To me, it's about being competitive. If you're going to pressure the duopoly, you have to be on the ballot in as many places as possible. You have to maximize your numbers and maximize the threat. And at this point, it's October. Look, it's early, yeah, but it's not really early anymore. It's not March, right? I mean, this is about the time where you'd have to start putting things together in a very serious way. And at this point, if he's switching back to independent now, then what were these past three months for with the Green Party? What right. momentum did we actually build? Is he any closer to getting on the ballot in as many states as possible than he was when he was with the fucking People's Party. Joke that that was. Like, I just don't see how any progress has been made now in the past few months. It seems like he's starting over for a second time. This is now the third ballot line that he's talking about running on in as many months. You know, it just looks like it's it's falling apart organizationally and I'm sorry, man. I, you know, you know, I hate to say this because I was super excited when he switched to the Greens, right? Yeah, I remember. I yeah, remember. you know, so I, I, I really pains me to say this, but it seems to me like he is making himself less competitive out of fear that he's going to cost Joe Biden the race. That's what my gut is telling me. That's what my and gut's telling me. I must say that I can't argue against that, and and again, we can't we can't sort of analyze this in a vacuum. We have to look at who has Cornell West been. And like I said before, Cornell West was a Trump derangement. We must stop fascism just three years ago. And still in some, in some, in a lot of his analysis, still, you can still sort of, uh, you can still sort of hear that. So like to your point, he's been sort of given a signs and maybe, this feels like, like you ever been on a playground, like the, the real rough kids trying to get like a, a kid that's kind of nice to fight. It's like, they don't really want to fight, but it's like, come on, man, come on, just do this. Just You get what I'm saying? It feels like that was that's what was happening. That was what was happening with Cornell West, that the radicals, the Chris Hedges, the Jill Signs, the Ajamu Barakas, the the uh, Shama Sawans were saying, come on, Cornell, you can do it. You can do green. Let's do this. You, let's do this. Right. And he, it was just not never, it never came initiated from him. It, he was just always being persuaded right. from one, from the other. And now that he's gone through three months, because to, to your point, when you said what has happened in three months, what has happened in three months from a person, from a perspective, from a pers uh, professional managerial class, Keaton, is that I've been getting attacked by my colleagues. I've been getting attacked from people who are in my class. I've been getting attacked from people like David Corn. I've been getting attacked. And all exactly. these people who used to be nice to me yep. aren't so nice to me now. Exactly. Even Anderson Cooper, I used to come on. They aren't so nice to me. So this is not really a good space for me. So right. I can, I, a person with that mindset would be open whether consciously or subconsciously, be open to the idea of doing something less as adversarial, but still calling it sort of that, like outside of the the uh, duopoly. What, what say you to some of that sort of critique? No, I was nodding, nodding along the whole time. I think that's all, <laughs> that's all absolutely right. Look, when he was approached by Nick Branagh, don't forget, he was recruited into this whole thing by Nick Branagh, that's right? True. And he said, sure, yeah, I'll run for president. You know, Nick probably needed to get the rent paid, so he needed a candidate, right? So he gets, he finds Cornell. Okay, I'll do it. Great. <laughs> Cornell's probably thinking, man, look, look, Cornell's a brilliant guy. Cornell's probably thinking when he agrees to run with the People's Party, 
all right, we're uh, maybe I'll be on the ballot in a handful of states, but this will be a way for me to get my message out there and a way for him to advocate for certain issues that he's always advocated for very strongly. And, you know, that's all well and good. But I don't think he ever expected to be on the ballot. He didn't expect to be a real threat on Election Day with the People's Party. Then, as you said, very, very correctly, mm. Chris Hedges got his ear, Shama Sawant got his ear, Jill Stein, no, come on, you'd be better on the Greens. This could be so awesome if you ran with the Greens. So he's like, all right, well, I guess I, I got to say yes, right? Because if I say no, then I give up the game that I'm not really seeing. Right. Fine, I'll do it. And then I think, and I did say this when RFK announced that he was going to go independent. I said this, I forget if it was the last stream or the stream before where we put out a standalone video and RFK announced he was going to be on, uh, um, running as an independent. I said, with RFK and Cornell on the ballot, it makes it almost impossible for Joe Biden to win. Yes. Because with both of those candidates taking votes from Biden, and yes, RFK will siphon votes from Biden. I know people say he's going to take more from Trump. I don't really buy that. Trump's base is much more loyal to Trump than Biden's right. base is to Biden. I agree. I agree. So if you got RFK and Cornell dragging Biden's vote totals down, it's almost impossible to beat a candidate with a loyal base like Trump. And I think that may have scared Cornell. I think that may have really scared Cornell. And I believe I said that in a, la in a show you know, last week. People can go back and check the tape if they want. But I think that scared him because now – that RFK is running independent, now it's no longer, yeah, maybe I'll cost Biden the race. Now it's I'll almost definitely cost Biden the race. Because with RFK on the ballot, you can win this election with 40 points. And I don't see Biden getting to 40 points with both RFK and Cornell dragging him down. If Cornell's at 5% and RFK's at 10 15%, there's just not the math there for Joe Biden. I think that scared Cornell off. I really do. And I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I don't take any pleasure in, in saying any of this. I know Savvy's he, in the chat. I know she says the platform's better. <laughs> I respect that. That's fine. And yes, you asked me, what is RFK going to do? I don't know if it's, it might be too late for RFK. I mean, he doesn't look like he's going to run on the libertarian line. So if he's not on the libertarian line, he's going to have this same problem of starting over, starting from scratch and having to build out. I don't know what kind of money he has behind him. He's a Kennedy. I'm assuming he has more than Cornell. So maybe he's got a shot. But look, I'm not I'm not bullish on RFK. I, you know, I never have been. Yeah, we've CJ and I and Nick and yeah, Russ and we Tim, we've, we've yeah, talked plenty of shit him. about RFK over the past. Like, I'm not an mm -hmm. RFK stand by any means. Um, and I don't. I, this is it's probably too late for him to do anything. But uh, you know, he is at least going in the right direction from duopoly to outside the right. duopoly. Cornell's going in the wrong direction. He went from outside the duopoly inside an institution with ballot access to now <laughs> outside the duopoly all on his own four months after he got in the race with the people's party he'd have better off he's he'd have been better off just sticking with them if he was going to do this because he just wait just took four months off of the clock with really nothing to show for it at this point is is there a positive way to look at this if if you and i were where Cornell West, I don't think, I don't know if he really has stands. Like, it doesn't feel like he has stands. He just feels like he has people that would support him, like us. I don't, I wouldn't consider myself a stand, but. Um... Look, the closest I can get to that, the, 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 look, the, the rosiest I can look at this is if you say, look, the Greens are dysfunctional, the Greens don't have their shit together, and so now he gets to build whatever movement he wants to build on his own terms. And that's better than having to do it inside the Green Party. Okay, I I can I once again, this is if we're gonna go down that road where we're trying to make this look as good for him as possible. Right. right. I mean, I can get there if you're talking about him starting some movement, some organization down the road. If mm. you're talking about maximizing your impact on election day twenty twenty four, I'm sorry, I don't see anything positive about this move at all. He, he set himself back. He took four months off of the game clock, moved the ball down the field nowhere because now he has to start all over again. And now he gets to pick and choose where he wants ballot access. And this is a prediction that I'll make. I could be wrong, but I don't <laughs> think so. I do not think Cornell West's name is going to be on any ballots in any swing states. That's my gut. That's what so, it's saying. So we're talking Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Florida, Ohio. Now, wrong. right? 
Yeah. No, now, right now with the Green Party, I know they're on Michigan. I can't remember the other two swing. It's not the major ones. It's not Ohio or Florida. There's two other swingy states. It could be North Carolina that the Greens are already on. And this was kind of giving them pause, especially in uh, Michigan. Maybe it's Pennsylvania, uh, especially in, in, in Michigan, because that's a that's a hot contested uh, uh, a state that they would uh, Republicans would love to sort of co-opt or take from uh, like with, with Trump, which he could, I guess. But let's do a, a couple of super chats. They're chiming in here. Um, I had a lot more respect for Wes when I thought he was running only to help the People's Party get ballot access. Either way, our elections are fake. And and Keaton, anytime you got to take off, you know me, I'm just going to be shooting this shit all day. So. Oh, sure, yeah. Anytime, yeah, anytime you got to take out, just let me know uh, what you got to do. And then here's another one. Uh, Jimmy said Dow was an infiltrator. This is proof. Now, let's speak, let me get your thoughts on that. Because also what I was talking about today, is this the Peter Adal effect? Can, can, would you trace this back a dir- directly or do you just think Cornell West wanted to not be so adversarial and he just picked somebody who's willing to do that? Or you think he's more like this is an infiltrator move? Because this is very suspicious to me. But go yeah. Ahead, uh, I mean, look, there's a lot of questions there. I would just be guessing, you know, I would just be speculating. So yeah, me too. I couldn't really say for sure either way, but um, as far as Peter Dow goes, um, it, it's it's not a coincidence in my view that everything that guy touches turns to shit. Every single fucking thing. <laughs> like, nothing that guy involves himself with ever goes well, whether it's the John Kerry campaign, the Hillary Clinton campaign, the Bernie Sanders campaign, the Marianne Williamson campaign, Marianne Williamson. and now the Cornel West campaign. That guy is what they call in Vegas a cooler. That guy sits down at the blackjack table, you take your chips, you get up and leave because you're not winning another hand with that guy around. That guy is just uh, bad wait, wait. Uh, news. In blackjack, there's there's like mojo, like you that guy gives you black bad right, luck yeah. or what is that? Is that's what that's oh I never Yeah, in of- gambling, I mean it's an informal term. Yeah, they, what what the, the the casinos they 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 call him a cooler, you know. Cooler's the guy who sits at the table and just oh, brings Sammy's a bad here. energy where no one wins when he's Sammy at the table. is in the building. What's up, Sam? <laughs> can you can you guys What's hear me up, first Sammy? of all? Because I'm I'm on my phone. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yep. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I can't I can't hear a uh, Sabby. I can hear Hello? Can you hear Sabby? Yeah. I can oh, there hear. she goes. Now I can hear you. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that, you know, I know a little bit more about the situation and there's a lot of things that have happened in the background that people have are not aware of. And so first and foremost, I think that people need to realize that the Green Party does have a primary. Dr. West is not the Green Party nominee. There are other candidates that are running in the Green Party for president. In fact, I'm interviewing one of them next week. I think it's next week. Davi. Um, But the problem, part of the problem, hold on, let me get my door. Hold on. Yeah, this is very, this is very interesting. Yeah, so this is is some of the things that people don't know. Like, there are other candidates running in the Green Party for president. People have just not interviewed them. So a couple of them have reached out to me. So I know one of them is supposed to be coming on next week. Mm -hmm. And what people have to understand is that, remember there was that whole big riff about the Green Party rigs their primaries? Remember that whole thing? Sure. Well... Some of those people that were part of the Green Party during that time, they were very critical when Dr. West announced that he was running the Green Party. They were like, why are you doing that? They bring their primaries against like, uh, what was his name? Dario. Against Dario, etc. And so those people were like, Dr. West should run as an independent. He should not be running in any political party. We need to abolish political parties. So if you look at the platform... It's very obvious that at least Dr. West was listening to the things that people said, because now I notice we talked to him about public banking, public banking's on the platform. It's more specific, it's more detailed, and he's running as an independent, which is what a lot of people were pushing for. 
But what's funny is that now some of those same people, not you, not you guys, but some of those same people that were saying he should run as an independent, now that he's running as an independent, now they're criticizing that he's running as an independent. Yeah, so it's it just wasn't me that, that thought he should run independent because I don't. I think he should run as a green. But it's curious to me that people would have that criticism, Sabi, that you, they want him to. Then, then what do they want, Sabi? What are they saying they want? But like they said, run as an independent, and now he's doing it. Like, what is their response to that? That's that's what I'm saying, CJ. Some people. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are valid criticisms. But I have noticed some people are being contrarian just for the sake of being contrarian. So my thing is, if you complained that he should be running as an independent, then you should be happy that he's running as an independent because that means he listened to what you were saying. But for the people who are like, oh, my God, now he's running as independent. Duh, duh, duh. What, what happened? Why aren't you running with the Green Party? I'm like, some of you guys sat up there and you criticized the Green Party. You said he shouldn't do it because they rigged their primaries. You guys said the Green Party was attached to the Democratic Party. You said the Green Party was infiltrated. So it's like, what, <laughs> like, what are you Renee, having to do? Do you know if Renee had been saying something like that? Yes. In fact, and sorry to yell, but yes, in fact, she's already out there. She's already out there right now. Criticizing. When you, when you are the one who said he should not be doing this with the Green Party because they're infiltrated and da, 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 da. Now he's doing what you said to do. And now you complaining that he's doing what you said to do. Yeah, I mean, That's look, I, I can't, I couldn't really speak to that. I was always of the opinion that he should run where he can be the most competitive in November. Like that. That's that's what it was about for me the the whole time, and that's why, you know, when he announced with the People's Party, we said no, he should be with the Greens, you know, um, because yeah. they're gonna give now, him the most access to the most ballots and make him the most competitive and therefore the biggest threat to the system i mean do you think that uh the democrats here let me just ask this very very broad question of everybody do you think the democratic party uh takes this as good news or bad news i think they take this as terrific news i think they are breathing sighs of relief over at mother jones over at cnn i think they take this as a huge weight off their shoulders. Um, what do you no, because in, in the recent commentary that was on liberal media, when it was announced that RFK Jr. was running independent, they were not happy about that. Well, because RFK running independent, this is what CJ said earlier, RFK running independent makes him a bigger threat because he's going from inside the Democratic rigged right. primary to outside. So he'll be on an outside ballot. Now, RFK is a bigger threat to them as a libertarian than he is as an independent. So if I had my druthers, he would run as a libertarian or maybe even for the Greens now that uh, there's an opening there. Ha ha. Just kidding. Yeah, Sammy, <laughs> but, did you, did you get is, a chance like, that, to see? That's where I think Bruh. you would have to come from. Bruh. Go ahead, Nick, Debbie, and then I'll ask my question. Nick Brana is trying to get RFK Jr. to run through the People's Party. Oh, that would be terrible. Well, that would be yes. terrible. Yes. Yes. They already announced he's going to be there next week when he RFK Jr. Either. makes the announcement. Uh, he's already uh, trying to get him run through the People's Party. I've heard those rumors, yeah. Wow. So it's just, but, but I know that for a fact. And what people have to understand is that the People's Party is bankrupt. No, but, but. Sabby, I'm not. I'm not. You mean literally? That. I, I, you I'm mean financially? That, literally? Well, yeah, they have no. In every way, I think. <laughs> they have no. They have no money. They have the, the People's Party has no money. But the thing is, is this, is that what I have noticed, and the reason why I got upset, and like I said, some of the criticisms are very valid. But my thing is, is like people made criticisms, and then they listen and they made those changes, right? So people made criticisms about the fundraising. They listened and they made those changes, which, by the way, the fundraising for the event, that was something that was set up prior to when Peter joined the party. So who set that up? You see what I'm saying? Good question. Good question. So, so the thing is, is that what I have noticed is that for whatever reason, and you guys can come up with your own conclusions, but for whatever reason, it appears to me that people are being a lot harder on Dr. West than they are on RFK Jr. No, but I, I mean, think I've the seen that even that before is... this. I've not necessarily on this on this particular item, but I've seen on so, sort of issues. I've seen this same sort of uh, heavy handed on Cornell West. But go ahead, uh, Keaton, and then I'm going to ask uh, Sabby if she's seen 
Dr. Jill Stein's statement. But what were you going to say, uh, Keaton? No, yeah, what I was going to say, I mean, I was going to echo what CJ said earlier. RFK in going independent, he's switching from the Democrats to the independents, which is a step in the right direction because RFK in the Democratic primary was a non-issue. He was a non-starter. It was an irrelevant campaign. It, it mattered nothing. Um, now that RFK is switching to an independent line, he's definitely more of a threat as an independent than he is as a Democrat, because as a Democrat, there's no beating Joe Biden in that primary either way. Um, so he's a bigger threat as an independent than he would be as a Democrat, but he would be an even bigger threat as a Green or as a Libertarian than he is as an independent, right? So that's why I think people are applauding RFK's choice, because he's going in the right direction. He's moving right. outside the duopoly now is he going to an outside institution with ballot access to make him a big threat as big a threat as possible no but he's moving in the correct direction whereas cornell was already in the best spot he could have been in my view I he was too, yeah. um because he was guaranteed ballot access in i don't know what the number is nobody seems to be really it's sure like about that. it's I don't like know if you know Sam, it varies <laughs> it's like it's like 20 it's like 20 states and then there's another issue that came up with the ballot access this guy came onto my show to talk about it who's also part of the green party he was trying to warn people against voting for marianne in the primary and then saying you're going to vote for green party in the general because he said that depending on which state you live in the green party they need to stay on the ballot and so he claimed, and I, I don't know the whole backstory, but he claimed that Bernie Sanders actually hurt the Green Party fight when the, the Greens were like, let's vote for Bernie in the prime. People were like, let's vote for him in the primary and then we'll vote for the Green Party in the general. Because apparently, like, in some states, you need, like, registered Green Party voters or they can take you off the ballot. So, for mm, example, North, yeah. North Carolina, most recent example with Matthew Hull. Matthew Ho got all the signatures, they got all the signatures for the Green Party, and North Carolina took him off the ballot anyway. Right. Yeah. And it's because I can speak to this. It's because this I was speaking to this earlier when I was asking the question. Is it, when I was asking uh what was I asking? I forget the question. Um uh, you were asking about Joe Stein asking, earlier, right? Yeah, but what I was saying is that just like you're saying. Like you need a certain amount of people to say I'm a Green Party, I'm part of the Green Party in order for you to be considered a an official party in in certain states. So this is one of the things I was saying is, is it what is he making this move because it's easier as an independent to get on more states? Because if you're part of a party, you have a party threshold and you also have a candidate threshold that you have to meet. So this is one of the things there. I'm they're aiming for yeah they're aiming for the 30 states 30 states that the green party does not have ballot access in that i do know Who? i know they're na they're aiming for those states because the green party has like 20 right so the other thing is too was like so for example with my state in massachusetts in order for to for him to have green party access in massachusetts what we have to do is we have to register as Greens. So when Justin came onto my show, he explained how this worked in different states. So that's another one of those examples where people need to be registered in order for him to be on the ballot. So in Massachusetts, they can't come here and just collect signatures. Right. It's going to be based on the number of people that are that are registering, like that kind of thing. And for the person in the chat that said hugging Cornell West was about access, Cornell West has been on my show, he's been on RBN, he's been on smaller channels, et cetera, et cetera. I was at a rally doing my fucking job and Cornell West came up to say hello. That. I didn't see that. That's that's ridiculous, Savvy. That's but we're gonna get that. You you get the people that's gonna take certain arguments to the just to the ridiculous extent. Like you can't give somebody guess to give somebody a hug. Get the hell, get the hell out. What if Savvy knew him for years ago? That's that's you, my Sabby, fucking job. Yeah, I went to RFK's ridiculous. campaign announcement and I covered that too. Do you see me hanging out with RFK Jr.? Have you seen R RFK Jr. or RBN or on my show? No. Mm. Yeah. That's that's ridiculous. I didn't see that comment, but I agree, uh, uh, savvy with that. Um, but the I, Jill, yeah, the Jill thing. So Jill. Yeah, so originally, this was before I left to go to D.C. I had invited Jill to come on to talk about the decision of choosing Peter Dow, right? 
and discuss that. And uh, she said, you know, I'll get back to you, that kind of thing. Then she got back to me and said that she's gonna, she's ready to come on and that um, there's an, there was going to be an announcement today. But I didn't know what the announcement was going to be, but we found out. So Jill will be on tonight to talk about it. I mean, it sounds like to me, based on the tweet from Jill, it sounds like it was a, it doesn't seem like it's bitter or like beef between each other. It sounds like it was like a mutual kind of decision. I didn't get the impression there was any like bitterness between the two parties, but. I wouldn't call it bitterness, but I would absolutely think that was a knockdown drag out fight behind the scenes about this decision. Because a job for Ajamu Baraka to be included in this particular statement when he hasn't been included in any other uh, statement and, and some of the quotes that she put um, gives me the impression. I don't think they 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 disagree with animosity. So that's right. not bad at here, all. If I can read no this. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I just I have I have the tweet on my on my phone. So this is about three paragraphs down. She says, this is from Jill. In deciding to run as an independent, the West campaign leaves behind the ballot lines they would have had access to, as well as the guidance of experienced ballot access staff and green volunteers familiar with the process in most of the 50 states. We expect this will be a formidable obstacle in the coming months. So what she's saying there is, um, you know, in deciding to leave the Green Party, he's making it a lot harder on himself, which sounds to me like she didn't want him to leave. And so if she didn't want him to leave, it made it that sounds to me like it was Cornell and Peter Dow's decision to leave. And, you know, listen, I can't lie. I can't I can't tell you something I don't think when I read that I hear Peter Dow. I mean, sorry, Cornell realized that he was too big a threat to Joe Biden on that Green Party ballot line, especially now with RFK in the race, who's also going to be taking votes from Joe Biden. That's how that reads. The Greens didn't want him to go. It's not like they had a fight and it just um, ended. It, it no, reads to me no. like the Greens did not want him to, to go, or at least Jill didn't, and Joe pulls a lot of weight in the I Green Party. I would assume. So I think we all have to remember, before Peter Dow was assigned to this campaign, remember one of the things that he continued to say is that he had already asked all three of them to run as independents. He asked RFK, he asked, so I guess RFK listened to him too, but he asked RFK, he asked Marianne, Marianne's uh, apparently not going to budge there. And he asked, he said all of them should be running as independents because he said he believed the more people that you have running independent, the more of a threat that'll be towards the duopoly. Now it sounds like RFK Jr., has has listened has taken that advice sounds like cornell's taking that advice like i said i don't think marianne is going to but what i'm saying is this may have not been a decision of the green party or or per se it could have been maybe peter said you know i think that you should run as an independent we won't know like i'm going to talk to jill tonight i'll get her perspective about it and hopefully um we'll get to hear from dr west too to get his perspective about it but, but i just want to remind everyone huh how recent is that tweet that you're talking about with Dow? Because I remember him talking at the very early on, at least it was like a year ago, where he was talking about how he wanted independence in the race. That was before he joined the Marianne campaign. Is that what you're talking about? There was that, but then also he said the same the thing about Mary. Movie. He said the same thing again. Oh, sure. I after he that. left Marianne's campaign. Yeah. And, and also when he joined Cornell West campaign, he said in my interview, he said, Cornell, all of them should be running as independents. So I think people might have missed that. But he did say that in the interview. Well, I, I read that completely different, and it could be my suspicious mind. I read that as a Democratic shield getting people to run independent because that's the hardest way to run independently. I'll, you get what I'm saying? That's not don't run libertarian, don't run green. It could so just be how a I would picture. read that is is that and I, when I think when I if if we're referring to the same tweet, I didn't take it as literal. I thought I thought he was saying something like. RFK and Marianne should be running outside of the Duopoly, whether green, you know, whether independent or, or green like Cornell West, but I could he, be wrong. No, he spoke. He actually had a conversation with RFK, mm -hmm. actual conversation. So this was before, obviously, this this new announcement, like from RFK Jr. to run independent. And he did say it like, you know, in my interview. I mean, we won't know like for sure, like what caused we may not know all the, the details, but 
I wonder if that's where it came from. If maybe like Peter was like, you should be running independent. The other thing I, that was really interesting to me that I noticed, notice how quickly the platform changed. All of, a lot of the things that we had been asking for, like when he was running under the Green Party, I'm like, you need a detailed list with just bullets that people can just go to and look at. You need to add this, you need to add that, you should have this, you'd have that. And the moment that he switched to independent, those things are all on the website. So again, I wonder, is it so much that the party was like, well, this is how we do it in, in the Green Party and yada, yada, that kind of thing? I don't know. Um, so I guess that's something that we'll have to like find out. I, I think I just read that as they've been people have been telling them, hey, we need more detail. And whether this was an announcement to run green, that they were going to update the website with more detail about their their, you know, what they want to do. I don't necessarily unless there's a change in something that a policy, you get what I'm saying? Let's unless but there is there is a there is the, the policies have changed, though. That's that's what I'm saying. Oh, if you look at the his, his, his point well, of it's much more saying. fleshed out. I mean, the the his the the platform section on the Green Party website, like I said, it was like a fifth grader who didn't do the book report. Right, but is it, it a few changed paragraphs. or just yes, more detail? Yes, because now no, because now it says public banks. That wasn't on the original pat platform. Now it, it, he also mentioned was it twenty seven dollars an hour minimum wage, and then like uh. Eighty thousand dollars a year for public school teachers, like those kind of things. So there's there's a lot more like information there. So it does sound like he did listen to some of the criticism. But I think the thing that really got me is when people were criticizing Cornell West. You won't call Biden fascist, and I think all of us disagree with Dr. West on that. I told him I didn't agree with him on that, with saying that one is neoliberal and one is fascist. But what was interesting to me is RFK Jr. can sit there in an interview and say that he's friends with Joe Biden and the Biden family. And I didn't see that same attack on him. Well, I mean, we we I'm did. Not, I mean, we we called him out for that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You know, Nick but but the majority did not. But the majority did not, especially the ones supporting RFK Jr. They did not call it out. Wait, sure. This is what I, mean, I would I like to say valid. about the people with RFK. Of for me, for me. I don't think we should be lumping RFK supporters as being with us. To me, RFK supporters are not necessarily left. They're just non-establishment. I don't, for example, I don't consider Craig Pasta to be left. I just consider him to be non-establishment. So if we're if we're talking about you know non-establishment sort of libertarian adjacent. Uh, people, they're absolutely savvy going to have a different critique about this and they're going to show their hypocrisy. And I'm not saying uh, 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 pasta, I'm not inferring that at all about pasta. I'm saying in general, they're going to show, you're going to see that savvy, that hypocrisy between the Cornell West and the and the RFK. And I just think it just shows their affinity for, you know, for RFK. And it shows that they're more libertarian than left, in my opinion. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know, say that most of them are left either. But I, I just think that it was interesting to me, whether you're left or not, if somebody tells you that they're friends with Joe Biden and they're friends with his family, my whole thing is be like, same thing. Do you consider Joe Biden to be a fascist? He didn't get those questions. He didn't get that kind of pushback. And you notice RFK Jr. has not gone onto any show that has a left audience, not a left host, a left audience. He hasn't gone on the Useful Idiots. He still ain't gone onto the gray zone. He hasn't been on Bad Faith. Like he like you guys noticed, like most of the interviews that he did has been on libertarian podcasts and conservative media. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think. But once again, I mean, if you look at RFK's platform, he's generally a liberal. I mean, he is really a liberal. He has a lot of crossover appeal, which is why I always thought it made more sense for him to run as an independent. Now, if you want to say a lot of RFK supporters are holding RFK to a different standard that they're holding Cornell West to, yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And part of why that's true is because they don't like Cornell West as much as they like <laughs> RFK because Cornell West is further left yeah. than RFK and he's further left yeah. than them. So, I mean, I think that all that all makes sense. Like, that's all sound. Um, but in terms of, like, the treatment that RFK has gotten these past few days, like one of the reasons why I've been personally, um, uh, I wouldn't say more sympathetic to RFK the past few days, but I would give RFK credit for moving in the correct direction these past few days. Whereas, you know, I just, I see this as Cornell moving in the wrong direction because I just think he's making himself weaker. 
I think this makes him weaker. It makes him a weaker candidate because he does not have the kind of infrastructure and he doesn't have the the ballot access that he would have if he just stayed where he was. And it seems to be yeah. like the Greens. I mean, I guess I, I guess we'll find out why, but I think, you know, from what I've heard from people that are RFK supporters, they said they mainly support him because of the pandemic. And the pushback that I give towards that is that you have to remember RFK Jr. was pro-mandates. And a lot of people don't remember that. So it was just when people say, well, Dr. West didn't move on this issue fast enough for me, neither did RFK Jr. But people don't want to, people don't want to bring that up. And people get mad when you say that. But the receipts are all out there. If we want to talk about the person, the actual candidate who was who was at, ahead on this before RFK Jr. even came into the scene in reference to that defeat the mandates rally, that was actually Dr. Shiva. Yeah, Dr. Shiva true. actually yeah. had these points and all the data and research out there before RFK Jr. even started to say these things. So if it's really just about the mandates, why are all those people getting behind uh, Dr. Shiva's campaign? Uh, look, I, I mean, not, I think look, not. I think those are fair <laughs> points, and you know, look, I'm not here to advocate for RFK or Cornell or, or or anybody. I'm just I'm just calling it as I see it in terms of making an impact. The way I see the 2024 race is a question of how can we cause as much panic within the electoral yeah. system as possible. Like that's the big question here. And then you know, obviously, platforms matter. Right. Policies obviously matter because that sort of determines the terms on which you're going to build this new movement. But in terms of whatever the date on the calendar is, November 5th, whatever, 2024, the goal on that day is to cause as much panic as possible in Democratic Party headquarters and in CNN headquarters and MSN. Like that's the goal as far as I could see. That's the short term goal here. And um, RFK switching from Democrat to independent. Um, is in service of that goal. Cornell West switching from green to independent to me is not in service of that goal because it makes his, his candidacy weaker. Somebody posted in the chat earlier that they said Keaton is too focused on threat level instead of message and views. Well, this is a campaign. This is a campaign. There's a day on the cl- there's a day on the calendar where we need to make as big an impact as possible in terms of um, hitting this political establishment as forcefully as we possibly can. And so in that sense... I do think there is an argument to say that, yes, threat level is as important, if not more important than messaging and views in that respect. And and so that's if why if you're talking about elections, I, I, I yeah. would I would have to agree with a lot of um, what you're saying. And this is why I pose it as is this is this pro Democrat or pro movement? Because it can be flipped flipped to be like, yeah, this is kind of pro movement. I'm trying to open it up to more people. But the problem is we can't look at it in, as a vacuum. We have to acknowledge that Peter Dow is a Democratic shield, and now this is happening because of him. So is this really being done because of some sort of uh, movement? We, we shall see. What I want to do is I can't wait for the first interview on left media that gets Cornell West after this announcement. I hope it's you, Sabby. I hope I don't know. I know you probably have already reached out or will be reaching out. But that's what I want to hear. I just want to hear, and I, and I want it to be a good interview. That's why I hope it's you, Savvy. Because Cornell West, is he doesn't do this intentionally. It's just his style. He, he talks in a very broad sense. Sometimes you got to you gotta you know go back and ask him the question so you can narrow down and get an answer. So I hope that it's not somebody just lets him give these non-answer answers and we don't really get an understanding about what's happening. But go ahead, Savvy. Well, I was, I was also going to say, too, that I think that um, we have to remember from the very beginning, Dr. West said this was a movement. It's not just a presidential campaign. So I think if we're just looking at it as a presidential campaign, like, oh, man, this sucks because now you don't have ballot access, da, 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 that kind of thing, then it's going to be easier to say, like, you know, what the hell, <laughs> like, what the hell is happening here? But I think that look at some of the things that have already been happening on the ground. Like, so Cornell West hosted a seminar for Cop City, Stop Cop City. He was at the, the climate march in New York City. I know some people had criticism, you know, over that or who was there. He was just at the Peace in Ukraine rally in D.C., just spoke at that. I mean, and he was just at the, the protest with the UAW workers. So when people say, well, Dr. West needs to get moving and needs to start doing something, 
He's been doing things. You, I think some people just ain't paying attention to it because it's stuff that's happening on the ground and they're looking at just the campaign. So I think that there should be that same push when we look at people like, because I don't know what Marianne been up to either, but when we look at the other candidates, and I said this to Dr. Shiva as well, Dr. Shiva, Marianne Williamson, RFK Jr., where are they on these issues? You know, what, what's RFK's position on Cop City? Because the last interview I saw where he was questioned about policing, he said that his website was incorrect yeah, right now, and that he that, was yeah. he was actually not against qualified immunity. Correct. But all those people who came after Cornell West and said his website is messed up and da 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 da, those people were silent. Again, not you, Keaton, but those people oh, were gosh. silent when it came to RFK Jr. having incorrect information on his website. And it wasn't just about uh, the policing issue. It was also about the abortion issue. Yes. Both of those topics on his website, according to his interviews, were incorrect. Yeah, no, we, we covered both of those, actually. The uh, police reform uh, sort of flip-flop and the uh, reproductive rights question from, uh, I think it was an NBC reporter. Yeah, look, I mean, no, RFK has a lot of very dogmatic supporters who can be extremely annoying. Like, I, I agree. <laughs> like, I'm, in full, I'm in full agreement with you on that. Um, but I, but I, I also think that, like, what, what, I, what I was really excited about when Cornell decided to run is that we have this movement leader, um, you know, uh, whose politics are basically mine i mean uh now that he has a more thorough platform i'd have to look through it um but uh i was always kind of surprised it almost seemed too good to be true that he would intentionally pose the kind of threat to the democrats that a green party run poses for reasons that you guys here on rbn talked about from minute one when you first interviewed him nick and cj when you talked about you brought up the fact that he endorsed biden Last time you brought up the fact that he, you know, considers Biden milk toast, whereas Donald Trump is neo fascist. Right. Like and the biggest thing and this is CJ, you made a you made this point on a previous mm -hmm. stream is a point that really stuck with me. You're like the leftists in Cornell West's class are Democrats, it, which means that. For him to actually, yes, I mean, obviously it's wonderful that he was on the ground with the UAW workers. It's wonderful that he was at the anti-NATO rally, what was it, two, three nights back. Um, that's all great. Uh, but what we're looking for in a campaign is, a, is someone who can consolidate that movement energy in a way that threatens the Democratic Party. And we are we have a unique opportunity to do that. And Cornell seemed like if he really wanted to go there that he was uniquely well equipped to go there because he is a relatively big name as Green Party candidates go. And so we saw this real opportunity there, but at the same time, it always kind of felt too good to be true because as CJ pointed out, so many of in Cornell's circle are blue no matter who at the end of the day, right? And and so I think we're kind of seeing him revert to those ways um, by making himself less competitive with this most recent move it just it feels like he's quiet quitting that's how i kind of put it to you cj in the private <laughs> messaging like he's not dropping out because that would just be kind of too embarrassing he would be letting too many people down but he's he's kind of slowly taking himself out of the game that's what it feels like to me and look i hope to god i'm wrong i i say this every time i have a criticism of uh cornell west is that i i really hope i'm wrong and um, I really, obviously, Savvy, look forward to watching your interview with Jill later on because yeah, that's gonna be great. I think that'll I think a lot of this conversation right now is speculation uh, until we kind of hear more detailed answers from her. But I would just love to know what exactly happened, because to me, the question is, who initiated this split? It sounds to me like reading her tweet. And again, I could be misinterpreting. I could be wrong. It sounds to me like Cornell and Dow initiated the split. That tells me he got cold feet. That's how that reads. Well, to we'll, 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 have to, thoughts, we'll have to find out. But, you know, I think that people do need to understand. And I've had people come on my show and talk about this as well. The Green Party, like the other two parties, they have their issues as well. And we do have to remember Cornell West is not the nominee. There are other people that are running the Green Party. He still does have to go through a primary in the green party. So that is something just to, you know, just to keep in, in mind, 
But what's also interesting to me, even with the, the campaign manager, and I have many criticisms of Peter Dow, which I, I told Peter I have many criticisms. It's interesting, again, when you look at the campaign manager, RFK Jr.'s campaign manager is a Democrat. Dennis Kucinich is a Democrat. He was a congressman. Mm -hmm. And nobody, none of these same people were like, oh my God, RFK Jr.'s campaign manager, he was a Democrat congressman. He's gonna, he's gonna do this for Joe Biden. He's gonna give it to the Democrats. Where was that same criticism? When his campaign manager, who actually was correct on the issue of Israel and Palestine and said it on the world stage when it was not popular to do so, and RFK Jr. still can't get Israel and Palestine correct, what's that really about? So if we wanna focus on campaign managers, we need to ask RFK Jr. why does he have a campaign manager that's a Democrat? But people won't do that with him. They'll do that with Dr. West, but they won't do that with RFK Jr. Well, there's a couple of things. Um, I don't have as much RFK supporters, clearly, as you do, Savvy, in your feed, because I don't I don't know any of this stuff that you're talking about with RFK, because I just only time I hear about RFK supporters is pasta. So I kind of lean on him as my resident uh, RFK supporter. But one thing to note about Dennis Kucinich, he is far and away better than uh, Peter Dow. He, he's so good that the Democrats prevented him and kicked him out of the conference. He could not caucus with them. And then they uh, uh, created, they switched up his, his, uh, his uh, area that he represented so that he would lose. And that was all based on his fight, his anti- uh, right. Sort of, or stand. So for me, I get your question because the people who are who are giving RFK a pass, they don't have the same critique. So they don't they can't give the critique that I'm giving. They just saying a different thing. They're just so, sort of being uh, hypocrites. But for me, saying that, hey, I made a decision to say I'm going to support Claudia. So I have just a basic just analysis of it. And I can just say Dennis Kucinich was far and away better than uh, uh, Peter Dow. But for those that support uh, uh, RFK Jr., you can't, uh, to me, you don't have the same ability to, to have that stand because you support RFK, who has said much more <laughs> about how his love for the Democratic Party than a, uh, a Cornell West has, has done so. So that's my- But Dennis Kucinich said the same thing when he was on Kim Iverson's show. Dennis Kucinich, because Kim Iverson interviewed him very early on, and she said, why are you still supporting the Democratic Party? And he said, because I'm a Democrat. Yep. Yeah. No, look, I mean, I, I think that's, that's all valid, uh, but I think what explains a lot of it is the fact that Cornell and RFK have very different groups of supporters, um, you know, in terms of people who are dug in to yes. one of those two candidates. And so... Like what you're saying is is absolutely valid, Sabby, I think. But I think it's a little bit of an apples and oranges comparison because we're talking about two different candidates who appeal to two different voter bases. And for me, when I'm looking at this right now, I'm looking at this more. And yes, guilty as charged for people who have said this in the chat about me. I'm looking at this first. Who is more precise and who is more strategic and who is more serious about ruining the democrats night in november 2024 <laughs> that's what the election is about to me now you want to talk about showing up on the ground and movement building it's all fantastic i'm obviously all about that but when we're talking about candidacies and campaigns and we're talking about a unique opportunity where it's looking like two failed presidents are going to be running against each other donald trump and yeah. joe biden and you're talking about the opportunity for a third party to just come in and fuck this whole shit up I, I feel like we really need to be precise and ruthless and, yes, a bit Machiavellian. That's a word that came up in the Jimmy Dore interview in how we maximize our impact. And um, this week, I think RFK made a step in the right direction. I think Cornell made a step in the wrong direction. And so well, we don't even know. We don't even know what the RFK step. We don't know if it's the oh, right yeah, direction or not, because the announcement yeah. comes next week. Yeah, well, so we, I mean, we don't know what well, no, he's. I we, added that caveat. If he if he goes People's Party, then yeah, we'll be laughing. Ah, uh, we'll that at would him. be terrible. That would be so, terrible. Yeah, that, that's possible. No, it's just like from and for me, like personally, I'm going by like the policies. Like yes, and I I told Dr. West when I had the interview with him, I told him I disagree with you on the position of 
Trump versus Joe Biden. And I've, I've explained that multiple times on my show. We do have our disagreements. But for me, I'm looking at policy and policy perspective. At the same time, I do understand that some people are one issue voters. So there are people who, that have told me and not on Twitter, by the way, but have told me in person when I was at his campaign announcement that the reason why the only reason why they're supporting RFK Jr. is because of his position on the pandemic. And so that's what it is for some people. And for Isn't some people, the vast majority. Isn't that the vast majority? I thought that was the vast majority of his supporters is because of that. I thought some have also said some have said because of the his criticism of the deep state uh, as well. Like some have said because of that. But most of the people that I talked to said it was because of his position on the pandemic. But again, like I said, RFK Jr. in the beginning was pro mandate he was actually for the mandates uh, I didn't even know, I didn't know that <laughs> yes he was for what the videos? mandates and every time we bring up those those videos of him saying those things then people get mad and they say oh well he he was able to be moved on this issue and i'm like <laughs> yeah yeah he was able to be moved on this issue after dr shiva released the data about the mandates and the lockdowns and rfk jr got all the credit for the shit that dr shiva did What's up, Nick? Nick just joined us, Savvy, if you didn't, if you can't see. And I know I know Keaton has been with me for a while. If you need to drop out, uh, just let me I know. I got to cut out in a few it's minutes because I got to go pick my yeah. kid up, but I don't want to bail on Nick right away, so I'll stay for a little while longer. Yeah. Right. I'll I'll ahead. Because I'm really bringing the diversity to the panel now, I have to say. Yes, You're going to have a much less diverse <laughs> panel with me gone. Yes. Um, what's up, wanted, Nick? Man, what's popping, my friends? Great, great to hear from Savvy. Great to have Keaton on. Uh, CJ, I was listening the whole time. I was shit posting in the chat for a bit. Yeah. I had some comments. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, I saw some of your comments. Yeah, yeah. So um, I saw I saw this. Um, and regarding my take on Corner West going independent, I tell you guys, I'm, I'm a straight up pragmatist. I want whatever works the best. Uh, my first, the first opinion on this is it seems like it's gonna hurt his ballot, the ballot initiatives, correct? So uh, that seemed like going to be a big problem. That's why it seemed like uh, it doesn't seem like the best move, just because the balance is still far. Uh, but I think this is just another example. This is why I said in chat as well. Why well, kind of electoral politics is a joke, and, and I say that in terms of we can't expect it to be the saving grace of movement uh, of our movement, movement building. And I'm almost to the point now when you see the insane betrayals by AOC and Bernie, which I still think people are coping with to this day. Uh, I'm I'm becoming even more radicalized seeing people fall for Ukraine war, uh, people voting for Biden, people going soft in an era that in an era that really needs intellectual left thinking and radicalism. So now I'm almost like we need to form our own governments. Like and this is what we're doing with our being chapters at the end of the day. I want you guys to understand that no matter what happens, whether Cornel West is Green Party, independent, whether RFK is running independent, Claudia, the Cruz, our mission doesn't change no matter what. We're still doing the same thing. And I'm thinking right now that we need to have a citizen, a working class, outside government where we can maintain and take care of ourselves. These, This is what people call mutual aid societies take ourselves outside of the system, have our own governing bodies and advocate for policies that allow us to do that. Like, for example, 10 demands, where we call for community control of public safety, community direct control in our, in our lives. But this take outside work, movement building, community building. Well, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm a, I'm about to start a boxing club here in Kansas city. My boy got back to the sweet science. So building boxing clubs, I'm, I'm, we got to have clothing drives to help get away clothes and we're going to get have more people volunteering. You got to see by doing this, by having mutual aid where we are like completely divested from the system, but we take care of each other. We form our own kind of government in a way where we take care of each other's needs. And then we could be, we become a militant political force while doing that. And a third party can be a tool to that. So if a third party want to help, these mutual aid societies that's going to need to stoke a revolution, they can take a part of that. They can show up at our events. They can advocate for our policies. And that's what I'm waiting for. Why well, vote for Dr. Corner West? Maybe. 
I don't know if he's going to be on the ballot now. Grange is usually on the ballot in Missouri. Mm-hmm. I said it from the beginning. I'm not declaring right. my support for anyone. I'm declaring I will support anyone who's showing up for the movement. Um, and that's what I think the only way to change. Because right now there are a lot of people who are incrementalists. Uh, Jimmy, it was good to see Jimmy call for revolution. A lot of people say, how is the revolution going to happen? A revolution in this country is not going to happen without an established mutual aid society where we're completely separated. We got we got each other's back when the police state target us. We don't target activists using the police state like Bernie Sanders, right? We got bail funds ready. I'm talking about a completely different form of leftism than we ever see in this country. The kind of leftism that got revolutions won in the global south, right? Yeah, and I was gonna I was gonna say Nick to the revolution part that you brought up. Another thing too was like when we talk about the, like the police state. When, when and if a revolution happens in this country, guess who's going to come after us? It's going to be the police state, right? So this is why something like stopping Cop City is very important. We do not need the police to be militarized. We don't, we don't need them having any more militarized equipment. Like they're already preparing for this shit, especially after the George Floyd protest, because they all, they know what's coming, guys. I, that's why I don't view, Savvy, you're absolutely correct. And that's why RFK gets all the heat. Like, and you brought up a good point. I've been listening to the whole stream. Where is the on Cop City? And even with all the mis- missteps, uh, Dr. West's campaign, it will be a, a net positive if he continued to show up at these events, if he continued to speak out against the Ukraine war in a militant way. That's the only thing that benefits us at the end of the day. Are you showing up to the. So I want him to, if he continue that, that's a net positive to me. He might he, he he will stay in our good graces because that's most important. Uh, I also think ch- the China thing is is very wor- worrisome. Like I've been studying this for the last two three years. It's way worse than it's ever been. I got a China segment in uh in the back where it's like every channel, like there, there's going to be a war within the next four years. I am convinced because I have never seen shit this unhinged. I'm talking about from Morning Joe, from Fox News, from Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, the Uniparty. Even the people who speak about the Uniparty support the Uniparty on China, like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt right. Gaetz. Yep. So, Savvy, you're you're absolutely right. Uh, the war on China, Cop City, and if you're not against the police state, and RFK is absolutely a, a police state bootlicker, fucking folded the second he had a hard question from the right wing about I saw Keaton, I saw your coverage on it. I didn't get a chance to cover the, have my reaction to that, but that was one of the things where like you're not that's you're incompatible with overthrowing the system because the police state is complicit with the system that we're in right now. It's also tied to imperialism. You have uh, Israel that trains with the NYPD, the LAPD as well, and he's weak on Israel. And he also said uh he's gonna continue his no, uh, his uh, his policy uh, following Israel with no question. Let's but now um, Israel, he bom- they bombed Syria. Israel, they want sanctions on Iran. So is RFK going to go along with the Iran policy? The Syria well, yeah, bombing? No, that, that's, that, well, that's the whole thing. People talk about how, well, Israel is just one issue. First of all, even if it is just one issue, it's massive but it's not just one <laughs> issue it has tentacles into other issues nick like you yeah. were just talking about there and so yeah no look rfk is not the movement leader we need maybe cornell is more the movement le- movement leader we need um but that does not change the fact that when you're talking about an election and you're talking about how do we use the election to maximize pressure on the system how do we use the election as a tool to disrupt the system you have to be, I think, very, very precise about how you execute that. And that's all I'm saying. Like, I feel like Cornell was threat level here as a green, and he's threat level here now as an independent. And so insofar as that decision made him less threatening in this specific instance, I think it was was a bad move. If he wants to go out and, you know, speak at anti-war rallies and labor strikes that's all great obviously i mean who would have a bad word to say about that yeah but i think he's weakening himself as a candidate so in this context he is weakening himself by doing this well he's gonna be on it looks like he's gonna be on tomorrow night and we'll get to hear all this from him because on your show, on your show tomorrow okay yeah uh, oh god no no, you're oh, no, R- R- no, Cornell, Cornell. <laughs> oh, God, no. R- 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 is not coming on there. <laughs> no, God, no. 
I'm I'm not um I'm I'm not that platform for RFK, I don't think. But uh Sabrina, no, um Sabrina does not like no RFK. Sabrina does not like no RFK or no RFK supporters, it sounds like, like you guys know Sabi is our person, is right? I would love to see <laughs> No, it's just like so he'll he it looks like he's gonna come on tomorrow night and uh, so we'll get to hear all this from him. Jill will be on tonight. But my thing is, you know, I look back on the Bernie movement and I, I got along or got in line, I think, with that whole like the Bernie platform and stuff like that, even though I did have disagreements. Right. I said, what about the issues that directly affect black people? And people are like, no, we got to get on this universal policy thing because we lift all boats. And I got I went along with that and I said, OK. I'll hold my breath, I'll bite my tongue and go along with that. But after that Bernie movement, I've continued to see black people continue to fall at the bottom. So for me, after that, I was like, if you ain't got a black agenda, I'm not really trying to, I'm not really trying to vote for you, man. It's just period. Because even lifting all boats, black people still at the bottom. When you give everybody universal health care and the health care system that we have in this country, black we, black people, particularly black women, are treated poorly in the healthcare system, especially those under maternal care. So my thing is, is this, I'm, I got tired of doing that for a long time. Let's go along with this. Let's partner with this person and we'll help everybody all together. And yes, everybody needs to be helped, but there are certain things that are specific to the black community that is not being done. And so for me, any candidate coming around here that don't have no agenda for black people, like RK Jr. said, he supports reparations. I was like, all right, cool. Then he came back and said he's against cash reparations and said this to a barber shop full of black men. And I'm like, nah, man, other people in this country got reparations. They got cash reparations. Other people in this country, they actually get concessions for their fucking vote. Other groups in this country, black people get nothing, nothing. Yeah. And I'm tired of watching my people fucking struggle. And that's what it's about for me. And that's the direction that I'm moving in. Yeah, that's why I have no tolerance for people who are weak on state violence and corruption. Um, I had Aaron Good on yesterday, who's a good friend, and we get along great. But uh, we butt head on R RFK uh, every once in a while. And I had to push back regarding his uh, Israel and Palestine is a dumb thing to have a litmus test. Absolutely not. Because if you're weak on Israel, Palestine, you're weak on genocide. If you're weak on Cop City, you're weak on state violence, right? Palestine so that's is, weak, is a weak litmus test now, Nick. Palestine is a weak litmus. That's where we are. To me, that's not at all a weak litmus test. But I know Keaton has to get going. About I'm very sensitive about picking up kids. So Keaton, you're doing good, or you want to give your your shout out that you're you're leaving now since you got to go. Uh, yeah, your, I should uh, probably kid. I should probably go pick up my kids now. I'm just gonna check my Twitter <laughs> to see if if Savvy ratioed me again, and then as soon as I check <laughs> into that, I will. No, uh, no, I'm just kidding, Savvy. I <laughs> no, I didn't. Check. And you didn't. And technically, you didn't. I was just. I was. I was. I was joking. <laughs> but you came yeah. close. You came close. Yeah. You gave it a good, um, good shot. When, when's um, your next uh, stream and everything? What, what, what's well, we're live tomorrow with, uh, morning Disney? at uh, at nine a.m. So right Russell will be back for that one. So, uh, hey, guys, thanks so much. Um, thanks for, uh, you know, letting me on. Uh, it was great to talk yeah. to you guys. And Zabby, I'll be watching uh, either tonight or tomorrow, but I'll definitely catch it by the time I go live next because definitely going to want to talk about that. Yeah. And, um, great to, great to talk converted. to you all again. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And Keaton, I'll, just, I'll put you I'll in the back. This, Thank you, sir. I'll just add this part, and then I, I do have to go because I, I know people waiting on me. But the other thing, too, is like, what just happened? A black woman was just hanged. Hanged. A black man was just, he just had his head pounded into the fucking pavement by the police. This, this is something that's happening to black people. So these kind of things for me, is just like, I, I totally get it. I agree. Yes, we need to have free speech. Yes, we need health care for everybody. I totally get that. But when people come to me and say, don't talk about the things that are just affecting black people. Nah, I got to push back on that, man. Because where is everybody else? When we out in the streets protesting against police brutality, you going to be on my side? When I was on your side out there in the streets fighting against war and all that shit, are you going to come on my side when it comes to the things that are happening to black people? 
because most of the time it don't go both ways. Where are the people speaking up on Haiti right now? <laughs> No, it's just like the IDF. We talk about Israel. The IDF trains the police force the United States. I mean, like this, this stuff is all connected. And I agree. Yes, we need universal policies for everybody. But those universal policies still keep people like me at the bottom. So when people say don't pay attention to the racial stuff, like I'm still a black woman and I'm a black woman in this space. And I'll be 100% honest with you, I'm treated very differently than the men in this space, as particularly the white men and the black men as well. The type of shit that people like me and Bree and, and Kim Brown get from people in this space is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. So I have to be loud and I have to voice my opinion and I have to push back. I cannot sit up there and just let someone talk to me any kind of way. So if I come across kind of bitchy, that's why. Yep, well said. Well and said, I got to well head said. out. Sabby, what time Sorry. is your show tonight? Let everybody know what time you're starting uh, tonight with Dr. Jill Stein. It's at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget, watch the Sabby Sab show tonight. Great uh, special with Dr. Jill Stein. And Sabby, I'll put you in the back unless you had anything else. That's it. Bye. All right. All right. So make sure you watch uh, Savvy Sabs tonight. Like I always say, you have to watch all of our networks together in order to get what RBN is saying collectively. So you have to watch uh, Savvy. And the thing is, she has two good gets. Um, she has Dr. Jill Stein tonight. And then she has, sounds like she has uh, Dr. Cornell West uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of super chats to get to, Savvy but Nick, so um, yeah, but Nick, um, so when I started this, I was on a 60, 40 where I thought maybe 60% because I'm trying to be, to let things develop to let, let's see, give people a chance to explain and let me hear what Dr. Cornell West. So right now I'm, I'm at, I moved through the set, through the stream, I moved to 70, 30, meaning 70%. I think this is a bad decision. 30%. I'm still trying to see what this is. Now, I could be convinced otherwise. Tonight, I'll be watching the Savvy Sab show and tomorrow with Dr. Cornell West. I just need to hear his explanation. Because for me, Nick, you, I need to hear an explanation while you're giving up advisors, Chris Hedges, Aja, Ajamu Baraka, and Jill Stein for Peter Dow. I need to hear a good explanation for that. That's what I need to hear. Um, yeah, so what are you I, what are you hearing though? Go remember, ahead, go ahead. remember remember my take on the whole appeal with Peter Dow situation where I was like I was one of the one of the softies in this scenario because I uh, always try to see the best in people, right? Always I believe in rehabilitation. My response to that to Peter Dow was where is the evidence that he's a winning campaign manager? He was with Hillary Clinton, right? Like where's why is he this sought out talent? that we're going to divide the movement for it. Like, imagine if you had a guy that was just a fucking election ace, fam. <laughs> like, yeah. nigga knocking it out of the park. He he helped the candidate fucking dethrone an incumbent before. Like, then you're like, man, I know this motherfucker might be shady, but this nigga, this nigga shoots. He's not for nine, <laughs> nigga. He, he, he's fucking Michael Jordan. With it. Then you can have a conversation, right? Yeah. But this, what's the evidence that Peter Dow know what the fuck he's doing? So when you see this move, it's exactly what I was talking about. The fuck we doing? Right? The fuck we doing? What I told you guys I'm interested in. I'm interested in movement building. Right? Seems dysfunctional. But I would, on, yeah. the posits, on the positive end, I will, if Dr. Cornel West continues to show up to anti-war rallies, if you continue to promote actions, that will always be a positive, no matter what uh, party he's running, no matter how incoherent the campaign may be, because at the end of the day, it's a tool. So that's what I want to see. We still have a year left for the into the election. Yeah. So Dr. Cornel West has a year to raise important issues and promote left actions and build a community and a movement. Is he going to do that? Peter Dow, I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, we'll see. <laughs> We see, but it is good signs. Like I, I, I don't want to be just one hundred percent negative, man, because it's good sign to see him like Kasi. Good sign to see him like anti-war 
uh, protests. It's good to have a candidate that speak out against the Ukraine war, guys. That's a giant, right? And who are who's consistent on Israel Palestine. So these are good things. But like CJ said, our being we view politics a little bit different, where strategy is an extremely important part of the movement too. And uh, if your strategy is bad, it need to be criticized. But I don't. I just don't like. I lost a lot of faith in electoral politics, like completely after the brain movement. Um, mm-hmm. This whole thing just shows exactly why we, it's just nothing but a tool, something that's just there, uh, but we got to keep our, our work going. Um, the the path what forward are- is, uh, go ahead, but I would say the path forward in mutual aid societies, um, building people powered governments outside of the system, enforcing power to negotiate and leverage with us, once we get enough strength, like it sounds crazy, but I am building something slowly. Few people volunteering here, few people volunteering here. But what if I turn this to a community thing? More people volunteer. All of a sudden, everyone got something that gives them meaning to their life. They all, and they want to build this community because I'm talking to people who completely disengage with politics, but they hear the idea of building uh, uh, a mutual aid society where we take care of each other. They love that idea. So what if we build that? Don't declare support for candidates. Completely reject the two-party duopoly. <laughs> divest from the system as much as we can, and force the system to go to the negotiation table, right? And now that's that's this theory takes a lot of explaining, but because there also need to be a completely redesigned approach to what the left actually does. Because we talking about people being hanged. We're talking about black people being killed. We're talking about hate crimes, right? Where's the conversation about community defense? I'm going to start a boxing club. Rome, he teaches people how to shoot guns. I think we need to have leftist gun clubs. We need to have self-defense clubs. We need to have, and this is going to scare the shit out of the fucking, pe- the, the white Americans that hate Antifa, but you guys think Antifa as well, nigga, that's exactly what the fuck we need. We need community defense. Right? Now, I'm not saying violence because people, oh, you have a game for violence. No, make the police hesitate before they fuck us up. You know what I mean? I gotta be careful because I want you, I, I, you guys had no idea how you guys had no idea how much I hold back on here. I'm not saying we engage, but we had a protest and they launched some tear gas. We have a militant, we have a militant organization <laughs> ready to respond in self defense, sure. which is our legal sure. right. How is that radical to say, CJ, that we should defend ourselves? against police that is engaging in war crimes. You guys know tear gas is, is a war crime? So we need to have boxing clubs, martial art clubs, weapon training clubs, gun clubs, and make the police hesitate because at the end of the day, they're cowards who are afraid of their mortality. And you got, and if that prevents someone from being killed, that's a cess, right? But now this is a long conversation. I'll pass you to I know you want to. I know you probably want to get out. Yeah. Of here, no, no, no. Uh, uh, no, I was going to ask you if you wanted to do a segment before he left, but I do want to yeah, say do. this. I, I got to show this. Yeah, yeah if you I have a segment, because no, because my my daughters are home. One is six, so both of them are home. So I I have all you know. I have all day. I don't got nothing to do. The I, thing is, I, I was about to take over if you wanted to leave because I had to cut a segment or two for Nick and Knight. The conversation mm-hmm. I had with Aaron Good was so good. So I actually want to do. It's not a long segment. This is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever I'm you want to do. Um, yeah. I'll stay for one or two. If you got more after that, you can take over. Yeah, I just, do one. I just, do, one. Yeah. I just yeah. do one. Tomorrow we have a uh, Jimmy, uh, t- uh, Jimmy. Yeah, we us. got Jimmy. So uh, we may do the that. first hour and then Jimmy will join us in the second hour. It'd probably be one of those. CJ. I was already thinking that the same thing that we yeah. do the first hour together. But um, but be, if before I don't want you to go into the story, you can go ahead and finish talking, but don't go into your story. I do want to bring up Super something chat. to get your comment. Your, okay. Yeah. Super chats too. But. Now, look at this, Nick. This is Ryan Grimm's take on what's happening. This is not a good sign. This is why I'm 60, 70, 30 on this being a bad decision. Ryan Grimm, the Captain oh, Save Jesus a Christ. Democrat of all Captain Save a Democrats. Oh, let's Jesus read Christ. what he says here. Cornell <laughs> West, after leaving the People's Party, is now leaving the Green Party, pledging to run as an independent. Probably good news for Democrats, as he's unlikely to be on the ballot in uh, some Jesus states. Jesus Christ, man. See, that's now that's... Exactly. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry, CJ, but if I was on defense on this issue, like this would be the thing that would give me all defense. Whatever, <laughs> is good news, like you said, whatever is good news for the Democrats, oh, that's, that's a bad move. 
<laughs> bad move, period. If Democrats uh, are signing relief, you fucked up, man. Because I don't think nothing really changes. The only thing that really changes is the fact that he had less ballot access. I just said yeah. the only thing that really matters is if he's building the movement, right? So if he's building the movement, it doesn't matter what party he runs under. So the negative is the Democrats are signed up, uh, is signing a relief now. There's no threat to Joe Biden, which is one have to speculate whether Peter Dow has anything to do with that. We see because Dr. Cornell West is speaking to Savvy tomorrow. That's the fact that Ryan Grimm is celebrating this stuff is very unfortunate. Yeah, <laughs> like we want people like Ryan Grimm to sweat. <laughs> we want people like Ryan Grimm to be sweating, man. What the fuck? Oh, they're signing a relief. And Natalie yeah. responds to Ryan and says, what benefit what would the benefits of running independent be versus green in your view, Ryan? And he says, not being on a ballot is probably the benefit. Oh, Jesus. That's Christ. a democratic shield, bro. That's a democratic shield. Oh, what's telling you what's up? <laughs> what's up, bro? JB in the house. What's up, sir? <laughs> I had like one of those because it was big news. Right, I was like, "All right, let me jump on because this is big news." Then today, <laughs> I get on. I'm like, "What in the heck?" Look, I was look, real real shit. I was on the phone with Sabs, and Sabs was like, "Oh shit!" I'm like, "Oh shit, what?" She's like, "Dr. Cornell West, he's running independent." I'm like, "What?" She was like, "I didn't know this was gonna happen." I'm like, "Me neither, bro." I'm like, "What in the world?" And I'm just like, "Is this a good thing or is this a bad thing?" I was just, I was scratching my head. And then I looked at the website. I'm like, this is kind of comprehensive, to be honest with you. It's a little bit more comprehensive than I thought, you know? And it sounds like he was kind of listening to us, well, especially to you and uh, you and Nick, you know? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen the platform yet to know what the details are. I, I'll go uh, look at it definitely, but I have not seen it yeah. yet, uh, JB. Yeah, I mean, it's it's more comprehensive. Yeah, you know. Um, so that's the one thing I was just like, man, this is interesting. I mean, you know, there is a a, a platform for the Black Agenda, right? Uh, right. there's definitely a platform. You know, there's I have some minor critiques, uh, in this platform that I spoke about on my channel earlier today. I just got off. Uh, we had on Richard Midhurst. Um, oh, Jesus Christ, that's fine. I got wow. That. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, that was a great discussion. Um, and then, uh, you know, talked about, uh, I talked about what's going on here in Orlando, about how local politics is very important and how they're trying to spend money uh, and they're basically trying to appease the hotel lobby uh, here in Orlando. So a lot of people need to focus on locally what's going on. And then I talked about how what we talked man, about. On JB is doing big things on the channel. He had Richard Medhurst, man. Every every stream is a banger. Yeah. I was, I had to interrupt because I got to tell you guys to subscribe to JB channel. Because just like CJ said, if you're not subscribed to the entire RBN network, you're not getting the entire RBN experience. There's nothing but gold on JB's channel, man. But go ahead, JB. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And uh, then I talked about how uh, Kevin McCarthy was basically ousted as speaker. And it just made me think about that Keith Sweat song, I'm not gonna be here for long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, I was just like, man, this is, this is some funny shit. And then, you know, I, you know, it was like, I think it was what 10 30 11 o'clock where the whole thing about cornell west came out and i was like oh shit now i gotta talk about this and i was yeah. just like and me and Sabs were like cj is gonna come on line <laughs> <laughs> because i had tweet let me tell the story because i had tweeted because you know i'm on the west coast so you guys are talking you know i wake up my tweets i already i already got a bunch of uh, texts i mean because because yeah. you guys are already talking for several hours and then i read i'm like Oh, Cornell West, what? And then my first reply was, I guess I'm going live today because I wasn't planning on going live. But that was my reaction. This um, is the RBN Super Show, man. We had Savvy drop, drop by, yeah. JB, Keaton. Keaton. Nobody to drop Keaton by. It was, for it was yeah. a good show. And uh, yeah. tomorrow going to be a fun one because we're going to have Jimmy on. We're going to talk about how the squad could have did the same fucking thing, man. Can you guys yeah. imagine? 
if you had AOC on the floor because they played the interview. They show, you remember the uh, the speech where Matt Gates was at the floor? How it's chaos. It's, it's chaos if we don't get rid of Kevin McCarthy. Yeah. Can you imagine a scenario where AOC was saying it's not chaos voting against Nancy Pelosi. It's chaos having 70,000 Americans die each year without health care, and Nancy Pelosi won't even put Medicare fraud to a floor vote. Yeah. And then the reporters be mad. You vote against Nancy Pelosi, why she vote against health care? <laughs> you know, pandemic. People are dying right now. And then Fox News, you the same way they're playing the Matt Gates clip everywhere. Every mm-hmm. fucking where. I watch the media so you guys don't. So I can show you guys what's relevant on the show. Mm-hmm. Every fucking where his speech was showed. Can you imagine if the millions and millions and millions of people saw AOC and Bernie Sanders, well, not Bernie Sanders because he's in the Senate, but AOC and Ilhan Omar said we're not voting for Nancy Pelosi, someone who is historically disliked, by the way, yeah. while fighting for an extremely popular policy. Instead of having an approval rating as low as Kamala Harris, AOC will be the most popular politician in America in this reality. Mm-hmm. That clip will play. Sean Handy will have a fucking freak out. Meanwhile, the redneck <laughs> to watch the channel, he's like, AOC spinning. <laughs> Nigga, they will have respect for AOC because they will see AOC calling out Pelosi, fam. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, one of the points that I want to add to yours, Nick, is yes, the Democratic establishment, yeah, they'd be mad, they'd be pissy, they get, you know, they get their tidy whities in a bunch, but who gives a shit, right? We will have their back. The, the people will have the, their back. Yeah, because the workers would be like, yo, good job. Especially with pushing for national, you know, uh, single payer health care during the middle of a pandemic. Do you know how much, how popular that would be? to everybody, and yet they felt, and this is what I said on my stream earlier, I said y'all lost basically the war of guts to Matt Gates. Ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you you lost to Matt Gates at being brave to the, to the leadership of the party? You guys couldn't stand up to Nancy Pelosi? You guys couldn't stand up to Hakeem Jeffries? Come on now. That's some stupid ass bullshit. That you could not stand up to Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi. Like yeah, they were actively bragging about yeah. not causing um uh, chaos in, in the establishment now. Um AOC used to run on causing a ruckus. I'm gonna see if I can find this tweet that that's gonna live in the hall of shame forever. <laughs> Where AOC <laughs> is. I'm not, do- I wasn't gonna do that. Me, Bogus Pelosi, fuck that shit. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I find a tweet, but JB, you want to chime in while I find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're bragging about being lapdogs. Well, we wouldn't yeah. disobey leadership like that ever. Oh my goodness, we're <laughs> little lapdogs, are we? <laughs> that's basically what the squad is. It is, it's embarrassing. Like, that's literally like, what they're like, doing. I'm like, grow spine, right. And here's the thing. You have people like Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar that are so vocal. Oh, my God. Ain't nothing but the Benjamins. And, oh, F Biden. Where's all that energy now? Boo-boo, where is it? Because I don't see it. What? And and, and you guys are letting a Florida man outdo you? <laughs> I want here. Matt, I found it. Like Maxwell Frost. Dude, where are you? Aren't you supposed to be this this... Really strong uh, Gen Z that's here to give it to the Republicans? Okay, then why don't you give it to the party that capitulates to them too? But you don't because you guys are just lapdogs for the establishment. Oh, my God, man. It's crazy. Oh, that's Andrew Yang right there in that conversation. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Go ahead, Nick. Um. I want to see if I can find the other tweet as well. I'm, I might pull that one up. There's just some, she wanted this whole tweet storm where she bragging how they are here to uphold the establishment. She says, Andrew Yang said, why did them vote along party lines to oust McCarthy? Not because they would, thought it was good for the country, but because they thought they, that because that what they was told to do. Yes, because strengthening someone who voted to overturn the election held the entire U.S. economy hostage, launched a baseless inc- impeachment inquiry. So this is her... Complaining about Biden impeachment inquiry. 
Uh, and this is why I said, uh, Savvy, Savvy. I didn't see Savvy too, what you said. She said, in other words, you do what the dim leadership tells you to do. Your assignment was a hostile takeover of the Democratic Party. Absolutely. I didn't see that. That's a great comment about Savvy. And I said, AOC went for saying how she would cause a ruckus to bragging about how she would never disrupt the establishment order. And there's a segment. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Hold up. Hold up. I actually want, I actually want to show you guys this. Look. I actually had this say I had this in the bookmarks for later. The Republican Party today. Morning Joe <laughs> was literally mocking. Just can't cover. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can fast forward to the exact spot. It's around right here. Just, li just listen to this around like two minutes or so. This came out today. I don't know if you saw this, CJ. The I haven't seen it yet. No. Here, the talking point coming from the liberal establishment right now is that Kevin McCarthy is a failed speaker. Nancy Pelosi had the complete obedience. Of the Democratic Party, and now here's Morning Joe and them laughing and mocking the idea that Nancy Pelosi essentially tamed AOC and the squad. So I want to get you guys right because I saw this earlier. So I'll, I'll play. It. No, it wasn't early easy. No. On when the squad came on and they no. were saying well, we're the real well, people. Nancy knew where her here it is. the country from where it is to some place you think is better. And you have to be able to express that openly and honestly with voters um, and be able to do the politics is what you're talking about, which is what Nancy did. Nancy knew where her votes were. She knew where they weren't. And she knew how much of what she didn't have she needed to get. And by the way, it wasn't go. always easy with her. You no, it wasn't early easy. No. When the squad came on and they no. were saying we're the real progressives. Exactly. And you're not the but she shut it. But the thing, the Joe, but she, she shut it, it down. She, she, she controlled she, it. She, she shut it down. She, she down. She, she she they said, and she did. And she did. When they were saying green, you know, are you going to support the green, whatever it was, the green yeah. new deal? She goes, what? What's it? What what's green, new, green deal? new deal? What? I don't. She didn't allow herself to be pushed in the corner. She. <laughs> remember, and that's a brag. <laughs> yeah, remember how Nancy Pelosi mocked the green new deal and Joe Scarborough and them bringing the point how. Nancy Pelosi was like, get the fuck out of here, you little bitches. You guys are going to fall in line, <laughs> aren't you? And they did. That shit is embarrassing. They are mocking the squad here. I might play the longer uh, segment in another. I don't want, I don't want to spend too much time. I just want to show you guys that part. Because yeah. there's another part in the end I might cover later. Uh, there's a short segment I want to do. Yeah, you got a segment. Do you want to read the Super Chats and do your, do your segment or do the segment and then... Um... We can read Super Chats after, because the segment not going to be that long. Yeah. Like, this may okay. be a five-minute segment, depending on your guys' take. This is Michael Steele. <laughs> Just thinking. Uh, that is literally <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. Um, so I said um, quite a few times, this is a shifting topic here, uh, the most unhinged person in the GOP race is Nikki Haley, fam. Mm. Like, not Ron DeSantis, not Donald Trump. The Nikki Haley gave the most unhinged performance on the debate stage. Uh, she's been by far the neocon pick for the Republican Party. And, like, her positions on foreign policy is straight out of the Raytheon playbook. And you even had uh, Vivek Ramaswamy call her out on this as well. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys just a few clips because I, this is this segment is very short. The whole, the whole idea of the segment is this is why Nikki Haley is the most unhinged, and of course, of course, she's the one that the liberal establishment loves the most. Like when when they talk about Nikki Haley, they're like, "Oh, thank God we got Nikki Haley. She's the adult in the room, right?" Um, so I, I'm gonna play with this one first because this one goes to the new direction the establishment dawn on anti-china fear mongering so let's let's play the clip and we write we well write. it's it's embarrassing i mean i'm looking at the fact that here you've had a spy balloon go over over our country you've killed thousands of americans with fentanyl you steal intellectual property and you're putting a spy center up in cuba and you're going to go say they're a competitor china sees us as an enemy they've been preparing for war with us for years and that's what you're going to do you're going to talk about climate change and the fact that they're a competitor the chinese had to be celebrating i mean and they're laughing at us they didn't and show the rest up. of the world doesn't know what's going how on do, with how us do you feel about the whoa 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 there's so much here so much insane lies <laughs> so much insane lies we got to take one by one. For one, she says China 
is killing Americans with the fentanyl crisis. Citation needed. <laughs> Last time I checked, that was the CIA who worked with the Mexican cartels. Yeah. Also, I, I would like to ask her, uh, are you going to go after the Sackler family too? Last time exactly. I checked, they're American. So I wanted to show the whole clip first. Let's take this one more one because this is insanity. Well, 30, it, 30 seconds of pure insanity. It's embarrassing. I mean, I'm looking at the fact that here you've had a spy balloon go over, over our country. You've killed thousands of Americans with fentanyl. You steal... They killed thousands of Americans with fentanyl. Unhinged conspiracy theories, guys. Yep. And, and we should be I'm worried about spy balloons, even though Americans spy on their own citizens. Yeah. They well, go ahead, JB. I know you want to try. Go ahead, JB. But, but no, I mean, the spy balloon was debunked. The U.S. government said very quietly. Okay, so it appears that it was just a it was just a weather balloon that had veered off course. It wasn't actually a spy balloon, but yeah. that was the point. And they what are you talking about? about? No, they still won't release the contents of what was in the spy balloon because they released the content of the spy balloon. They realized it's just a fucking balloon. <laughs> China has access to satellites. Use deeply unserious unch children. Mm -hmm. The new conspiracy theory they threat they they flowing out now is that college age men <laughs> in China are immigrating to the United States to spy and send military documents to the Chinese Communist Party. This is serious stuff that Americans say with a straight face, and I'm going to document it on RBN because I tell you guys the United States is the most unhinged propagandized country in the world. This candidate I'm showing you here is not a French candidate. Donald Trump hired him, her, you know, to clear the swamp. <laughs> More than Joe and the Democrats love her because she in, step, in lockstep with the Uniparty. And also, Nikki Haley, why are you bleaching your skin? <laughs> why are you bleaching your skin? That's how a lot of people call her out for this. Man, she really got appealed to those white voters, huh? Because she does this thing where she ble she make herself look whiter than she actually is. She's doing it again here. But let me see. I, I let the clip play first. It's That's terrible. Clip. I didn't know she did that. I didn't know she yes. does that, but she does. That's the thing that people always knock her for. Like they will never say that in establishment, but she bleaches mm. her skin. <laughs> like and her um, name. That's not her name. Is her name? Yeah. Her name is not Nikki. Actually. So CJ, I played the first thirty seconds without interrupting it. Now I had to play it again to take it piece by piece because the lives are so aggressive. I would have been stopping it every two seconds. So let's continue. Intellectual property, and you're putting a spy center up in Cuba, and you're going to go say they're a competitor. What? China? Not a spy center. Not a spy center. <laughs> <laughs> I covered this spy before. Center. I told you I, I had to play it in full because every second she tells a lie. There's cooperation between Cuba and China, and they are doing military exercises together, which countries are allowed to do. You know, that's NATO. You know, NATO is a military alliance. Countries are allowed to have military alliance and diplomacy with each other. But when other countries do it, they say, oh, China has some nefarious plot to have a military base in Cuba. You mean what the United States is doing to Taiwan? <laughs> I'm sorry, but what has the United States been doing with Israel? <laughs> yes, what the United States does, period. Yeah, and you gotta see, like, her skin tone is gonna be in different color in every single one of these clips. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna go blonde gonna, next. Gonna Watch. Watch. This segment, but I, I have to bring it up. She's she goes on. Uh, right wing media, knowing that a white audience is gonna watch her and tones her and bleaches her skin to make her look whiter. <laughs> now, I remember I seen a video, uh, a picture where she wasn't bleached, and I actually was shocked to see how brownish she was because she does this all the time for media appearances. <laughs> like, without like the standard makeup, she's pretty, like, kind of light brownish. Uh, but anyway, let's continue. China sees us as an enemy, they've been preparing for war with us for years. And plus, once again, I can't that while I play it in full first. What because they say China is preparing for war with us. You got you want to know why China may do something that is smart like that? Maybe because you had United States generals, United States senators, United States Congress people, NATO, and Europe. They all say stuff like, Man, I think we need to go to war with China in the next few years. Yeah, we definitely about to go to war with China. Yeah, let's fuck China up over Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan is a part of China. We acknowledge oh. that for decades, but we want oh. to go to war with China. Then China sees the West 
constantly talking about the fact that they want to go to war with us. So China says, maybe we should beef up our military. Fucking crazy. <laughs> no, crazy motherfuckers talking about war. So then Nikki Haley goes around and say, man, these people who bo- boosted their military because we threatened war with them is now threatening war with us. But, but it's, dude, it's beyond parody. This is this is the equivalent of you uh, seeing somebody and they get into a relationship with somebody else and you go, well, they got into a relationship just because they want to make me jealous. <laughs> and, I, and, and China's like, Man, I don't give a shit about you. <laughs> why you, why you got to make it all about you? Because the thing is, it's not even about you. Like, look, I'm chilling out here with Cuba trying to help them out. And somehow you got to make it about, look, I'm sorry, but this has some white supremacy shit written all over it. It's like, well, we got to center ourselves because you're in the United States and whatever China does, even if it doesn't affect us, it, we have to make it all about ourselves. Like, get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me right now? Yep. So I, I want to play one more clip because I don't want this segment to go too long. I just want, I, I'm glad that you let me do this, CJ, because I had to cut this from yeah, for sure. Nick and I. I had to cut like two seven for Nick and I. So. I'm glad I was able to get this one in real quick. So I'll just play this video and you guys can comment on this. This is another example of Nikki Haley being deranged and she's been insane on Israel. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, who's, his position on Israel is not perfect, but he said we need divest from Israel, which is a, a, a bet, which is a better position for almost anyone in the establishment. So Vivek Ramaswamy said we need divest in Israel and Nikki Haley had a fucking panic attack. No, I <laughs> an idea of, the, of that. So let's watch some more of her takes on this. And let's, let's... But Israel is a great partner to us. It's a bright spot in a tough neighborhood. And too many people think that Israel needs America. That's not the case. America needs Israel. They are the front lines of defense. For you guys notice how her skin is a different color here? Slightly yeah. darker. A tan darker here. <laughs> I just love how inconsistent it is. <laughs> Every time I see her. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. What we need to do is remind everybody hate is hate. Whether it's racism, whether it's anti-Semitism, there is no place for it, and it needs to be dealt with that way. And so on college campuses, if they don't have programs designed to combat hate, and that includes anti-Semitism, their funding should be pulled. What does that mean? What does that mean? Does that mean BDS? Does that mean resisting the apartheid state of Israel? And see that you're not in your head. That's exactly what she is saying, guys. This is why Nikki Haley is the most unhinged. Because people like Ron DeSantis and other Republicans already put anti-BDS measures in place, which is a violation of First Amendment. So Nikki Haley is saying that that campuses should have punishment for students who engage in, quote unquote, anti-Israel uh, political stances, which is essentially pro-human rights, anti-genocide, right? But anyway, only 20 more seconds, we let it continue. Only interrupted once. That simple. We can't have people on the streets sitting there worried. And as a mom, I have a mom heart worried about your child on a college campus because someone's going to hate them. But when you have this rhetoric and you allow an Iranian and, you know, the president to go and spew hate from the U.N. world stage after we gave six billion dollars to them, that's what you get. You'll have a president who remembers Israel and the U.S. are best friends. and We're going to keep it that way. So she's for the she's for the NATO war, insane anti-China hawk, insane Zionist. And you guys see why Morning Joe loves her now. They love her though. <laughs> they absolutely love her. The establishment loves her. Like when they have to pick, oh, who won last night? Nobody. Well, Nikki Haley did all right, right? Yeah. She said we did a lot of reaction to She the said case. invade somebody, right? <laughs> We did the live reaction what to the it debate, is. CJ. Remember what I said? Yeah. After the debate, my first reaction was immediately Nikki Ailey, the most unhinged candy on the stage, followed closely by Chris Christie. And then the next day, Morning Joe, like, man, we think Nikki Haley really killed in that debate. <laughs> we couldn't be further apart. But, JB, you want to respond? I got one more last yeah. week. You want to respond before I move on? Nikki stuff. Haley is one of those annoying people. She reminds me of that kid that reminds the teacher that we had homework. <laughs> oh, she's annoying. So another, uh, this is my beef with the right in general, right? Because I always wonder how they're going to spend the whole thing with Joe Biden spending $6 billion more than Donald Trump, right? It, there's this quote unquote border crisis, right? But you guys understand that neoliberalism, there is no answer to a border crisis and immigration crisis through neoliberalism. <laughs> If Biden is funding the border more, but there's still a border crisis, that means border funding is not the answer to the problem. 
if we're funding ICE and board security to historic levels and it's still not solving the problem, that means you, do, you need to find another solution. That's common sense, right? Now, here's Nikki Haley, the unhinged dipwit, <laughs> because now they have people, like, it's not me even defending Joe Biden, because this is me calling out Joe Biden for his harsh immigration policies. Because look at this dumb tweet by Nikki Haley. She says, border control has seized enough fentanyl to kill every single American this fiscal year, and Kamala Harris and Joe Biden is nowhere to be found. Close the border, stop the drugs, save our families. Pause. Do you guys see the contradiction here? <laughs> so on one hand, she's pretending that Joe Biden, Jim Crow Joe, and the Democratic Party has an open border, but this somehow open border was able to seize this much fentanyl. How was they able to see the fentanyl, Nikki, if there's an open border? So this thing that the right wing is doing, Nikki Haley keep doing, and like once again, like RFK falls for this as well. I seen Russell Brand fall for this. A lot of people fall for it when they pretend that Joe Biden, Jim Crow Joe has an open border. Joe Biden is funding the border more than Trump, fam. Hang on, uh, Nick, CJ. That does that. Does all those bags look like that cheap ass washing machine powder that you buy yep. at the dollar store? Yep. It don't look like what she. That's that's like putting a you know some oregano in a bag and calling it weed. Yep. Um, mm, this is another, look. This is uh what Joe Biden has accomplished right now. And this is breaking. The Biden administration bypasses. 26 federal laws to build additional border wall in South Te Texas. Joe Biden is building that wall. And I'm looking directly at you, white America, right now. What the fuck are you guys talking about? When you guys keep saying that Joe Biden has open border. Joe Biden deported more people than Donald Trump. Repeat after me. Your neoliberal capitalist State violent solutions to immigration does not work. It doesn't matter if you invest more in ICE, if you invest less than two ICE, you're going to have the same result. If you want to solve the problem, stop U.S. imperialism and United States sanctions. Yep. Anyway, uh, so people calling her out. Uh, Nikki, I, I'll, I'll pass to you guys. I'm pretty much done. I'll, I'll the no, uh, I'm glad you did this because I, it was a Nikki Haley segment that we kept pushing back. It was on China. It, was just, it wasn't just this. So apparently, Nikki Haley's just doing only China unhinged uh, segments, Nick. I guess that's all she's doing because I had literally had another segment about her being unhinged, and I just never – I kept pushing yeah. it to different shows, and I just never – was able to I had to do to this segment because every day, that. like I could, this segment could have been way longer. I wanted this to be a shorter segment. I could literally just show you anything she says in the segment. Be like, yeah. Nikki Haley on hinge, Nikki Haley on immigration, Nikki Haley on China, Nikki Haley on Ukraine, <laughs> Nikki Haley on Israel. And, and I guess her Haley husband is a military Israel. officer. Somebody huh? in, the, in the comments. Yeah, said, her somebody, her husband is a military. Is he like a high ranking? I don't know anything about this. I don't know if he's a high ranking officer, but I wonder. That gives me, I don't know. That gives me very much intelligence vibes from her. That her husband is in, is a is a military officer, especially if he's high ranking. And then her and, and what she's pushing, like this, just it just feels gives me in, intelligence uh, sort of yeah. vibes. And, Donald um, and I'm so I'm happy that she's not popular in the GOP because I would hate to have her be elected over Trump. Even Trump is terrible, but. We can't have Bro, a hall where the establishment is a behind her. Go ahead. Yeah, she's a doomsday candidate. Like, she's another Hillary Clinton. Like, she's literally Hillary Clinton with an R in front of her name instead. Uh, absolutely yeah. unhinged foreign policy. Anyone who would rather have Nikki Haley than Donald Trump, essentially everyone in MSNBC, right? You are a moron. Like, she's 100% crazier than Donald Trump. But with that said... For the Trump people, and I can, I'm going to continue to jab at you, duopolis. We are post duopolis here. For the people who think that Donald Trump drained the, the swamp, he hired this, this psychopath to be his representative at the UN. She had some UN job under Donald Trump. And then she wanted people that betray, learn, uh, later turned against Trump because she found her lane as an anti Trump Republican. 
a lot of people can argue, and I think it's a good argument to be made, that Nikki Haley thought that Trump was just completely full shit and would completely bend to the Pentagon, and he was angry that Donald Trump would have criticisms of war, and that would make Nikki Haley turn against him. So the liberals who think that she's like this moral beacon, and not even that, Nikki Haley became anti-Trump when she's like, man, this motherfucker's not a Dick Cheney, so we got to take him out. You guys know, I still don't think Trump's uh, record on the empire is offended. horrible, but the, the establishment requires full obedience. You know what I mean? Be look at the super chats because I see y'all know you've yeah, been all day. There is uh, so there is a lot of super chats. Yeah, um, me and JB can probably wrap the super chats if you had to get out here. I know you you had a long. Yeah, story. I'm gonna. I, I do want to read. Uh, I want to be here for a couple, and then I'm gonna let you guys uh, wrap because there's 34 super chats. Yeah, do you read it? We only read what, like eight. We only read like eight of them. A lot yeah, of these came in afterwards. Um, I can kind of give you. I can kind of start it where we left off, and then. I'll let you guys. So from now, going from top to bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and it's yeah. You, st- you started. You started. Yeah, top to bottom. Um, this one right here, we're gonna start with. So this is one is a it has a timestamp of twelve thirty. So about there is all we got to. Yeah, I see it. So I see it. yeah, so I'll, I'll read the next couple and this you'll you'll see where we're yeah. at. It says, "What who counts and certifies the votes? It ain't." The greens to the point, and thank you for that. Uh, oops, no, that's not the one that I had on the screen. My bad. This is the one. Which one do you have? Amlo. Let me just read. Amlo created a new party in 2015 and in 2018, one with a supermajority, and smashed the Mexican duopoly so hard that they are running together. That is crazy. That is a good story. That almost sounds like a damn documentary that yeah. he created his own party got elected too bad our system is not is not so uh free like that but go ahead if you want to yeah, read you, you guys see one. what uh amlo recently said uh no i didn't see that i didn't have it i, I covered it briefly and nick knight was in a formal segment actually i don't know if I, I actually had to cut that part too i had to cut a lot for nick knight because we got into a mini debate over rfk not not anything heated but just a mini conversation mm-hmm. about it let's see if i can pull this up here um here it is. Amlo once again speaking out against Ukraine aid. I'm just I'm point it's not even the same. I'm just pulling it up to show you this receipt in light of the super chat. Uh so as Bernie Sanders arrest protesters because they ca- challenge him on Ukraine aid, you have leftist leaders all over the world that challenging this. Lula calling this out, Amlo calling this out. Yeah. And now you now you guys know why Nikki Haley and Republicans want to invade Mexico. Mexico led a international coalition to condemn the Cuban blockade. AMLO is not perfect. He's more of a social democrat as well. But I would say 100%. AMLO far exceeded almost everyone's expectations. Yeah, he did. Everyone could say, everyone, I remember when you, I was like, yeah, AMLO is, is a side, but he's more, I, I had my uh, expectations very tempered. Uh, and remember, Mexico is a close relationship partner with the United States. So there's only so much a Mexican president can do, realistically, if they care about their people. So you can't really rely in Mexico historically as an anti-American crusader. But with that said, the Biden administration and neocons have been furious because he, once again, sur- surpassed expectations, spoke out against the Venezuelan sanctions, and he uh, criticized the United States for not... In- remember when Biden had the South American summit? He didn't yeah. invite Nicaragua, Venezuela. He led the, the campaign to criticize Biden on that. He criticized him on Join Assange. He called for the freedom of Join Assange. Amlo's just been in getting W after fucking W. He, he called for the nationalization of lithium as well. So I'm sure that probably Mexican domestic leftists had criticism of him. But I'm looking at it as American on a global scale. On the global foreign policy scale, Amlo has been fantastic. Uh Anyway, CJ, and that's why Vivek, well, and that's why Vivek that, is like he got to go. Yeah. Vivek is like I'm so that's happy that this that's guy exactly. is leaving. He can't because I think he's termed out. I don't think he can even uh, run again. I think he he won both of his elections, and now yeah, let's get he's, back. He's uh, termed out, but you can get back to the. But I, I'm gonna take off now, so I'll let you uh, finish it yeah. from there. Yeah, um, JB gonna be right back, so I can read some super chat. Yeah, yeah, he'll be right back. Yeah. I saw the I saw the private chat, but thanks for uh, taking over yeah, and uh, these are some super good show. super chats. These are some good super chats. They might spur a little bit of conversation just to give you a heads up because some of them are long, like when we get into the deep discussion. So 
But other than that, um, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, Nick and JB will be taking over, and I'm out. Uh, Nick, I'll see you tomorrow for the Jimmy Dore yeah. interview uh, tomorrow, Nick. Yeah. Uh, really good week on RBN. This is RBN Super Show. Had Aaron Good on Nick and I yesterday. Uh, and Jimmy Dore will be joining us tomorrow. So thank you for two bucks, DC. Who counts and certifies the votes? It ain't Cranes. Uh, thank for Super Chat. Thank for the 199 Everton Wright Jr. You can say whatever on a platform when you have no chance of harming the Democrats. A platform is just words. We need to stop giving value to words and focus on the actions. RFK people are not left. Uh, absolutely, I would agree with that as well. If you're not challenging the police state, um, and once again, in my opinion, if you're propping up and advocating for free market capitalism like RFK Jr. is, uh, you can say he's an anti establishment fighter, but not leftist. Uh, thanks for the five bucks, Eric. In an early Green Party Zoom chat, uh, Cornell West was planning to come out to Arizona in October because petition signatures are due in November one week ago. I learned there are no plans. Uh, yikes. Uh, a few more for Everton. Right. If CJ can see partner with worker strike back as common sense political move, but West couldn't, a Harvard graduate, we need to stop pretending West is something he's not. Sister soldier again. So Everton has a lot of criticisms. Uh, Dr. West was, like I said, I said on Jimmy, I said on Jimmy's show, a lot of people felt a certain time away because Jimmy went to Dr. Cornell West. But I said on Jimmy's show, like, pfft, Fuck, I don't care if people criticize politicians. In this movement, everyone need to be held accountable. Uh, if if there was ever a time where, where I was elevated in a leadership position, I know you guys would go after me if I made a mistake. That's how that's how this works. If we are serious, right? So I never offended when people uh, criticize people and politicians who even people I like. Like I I never hid the fact that. I like Dr. Corner West as a fucking guy. Like, he helped promote it and share my first op-ed. He was on my show before anyone knew who I was. I like him as a guy, but I can't allow that to affect my analysis. I can't. If, if we have a platform, there's a responsibility that we have. And that's where a lot of people fail. Where they, and That's the Vanguard, Kyle, Crystal. They become access journalists where... They allow their friendship to shape their analysis. And that shit is intellectually lazy. I care way too much about the movement and the sta sta status of the working class to allow my opinions to affect it. Because uh, with this said, like a lot of the, lot of the attacks on his character, I don't agree. We kind of like Dr. Cornell West as a guy. But if you're going to be a leader in our movement, the way I envision it, you're going to be taking heat. Because I, that's what a horizontal movement looks like, JB, my friends. Like, in a horizontal oh, movement, if you're going to be the leader, you're going to be checked. That's what it means. But, JB, I know you want to chime in. Go ahead. Well, he said he doesn't even know the Uhuru situation. Actually, he spoke about this on Black Power Media in response to what's going on with Omali Ishitela and the African People's Socialist Party. And he actually expressed solidarity with what's going on with them. So, yeah, I mean, I'm he actually talked about it. it. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. the correction. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know all that. Um, um, so, Dr. West, Dr. Corner West has been great on nato uh and, and imperialism as a whole uh i just think he need a sharper message i think mm -hmm. for two bucks name my taco uh even on a show like when he says he said when i say that biden is a neoliberal and trump is a fascist i'm not saying i'm saying that neoliberalism is equated to fascism i'm like man you're on point but that not a, a very sharp message like not a good way it's it very you don't have time to to shoehorn that message in a in an interview, and, and a lot of time we don't. So most people who are not educated to your neoliberal, neo-fascism, and they don't understand what that we know that neoliberalism leads to fascism. To me, it's not that much better. Uh, but anyway, let's continue. Yep. Like, I don't want to be too long in each chat. Thank for two bucks to name my taco. False equivalence. This is during the conversation that Savvy has, so I'll just read them. False equivalence, Sabs. RFK Jr. was a damn candidate. Uh, one thing I said on RFK, once again, I did not see him going independent coming. Me I thought you were be a Democrat. I was wrong about it. Uh, you guys heard my criticisms with RK, but I give him props for actually believing what he's saying. I guess because I, mean, I said what Aaron did earlier. I didn't believe he was a serious candidate. I don't. I do not believe that people who run as Democrats are serious. I just don't. So in, until you run, uh, decide to run independent, no matter what independent party you're running, you're not even a serious person. So even though I disagree with RK, at least he's willing to fight for what the fuck he believes in. Yeah. And. Yeah. One, and one thing I give props to RFK supporters, 
is they have revolutionary optimism. Like they have like paths and strategies. I don't think gonna work, but they like, yeah, let's run RFK. And we gonna throw, overthrow U.S. imperialism. Yeah, we're gonna take on NATO, and they have the optimism that uh, that the social democrat NATO left don't have. They threw in the the, the yeah. they waving the white flag. But anyway, let's move on. Thank for nine nine nine, Jess. I saw two interviews with Green Ballot Access stuff staff, including Stabby. They talk about adding Greens to Congress. Then a third interview, Tim Black, I think. They said Greens on top add more Dems vote down ballot. They said they said Greens on top add more Dems votes down ballot. Yeah, I remember how Hawkins used to say stuff like that. Um. Anyway, let's let's move on. We still got quite a bit of super chats. I appreciate the support. Uh, Thanks for the one nine nine Virgil. It's all deck chairs on the Titanic at this point. <laughs> it just feels like that. Yeah, thank you, Virgil. Um, thank for there's no one for Everton. He got a lot of funk for Dr. West. Thanks for the one uh, nineteen ninety nine. West has had decades to do the very actions Nick is talking about, and has yet he has nothing to show for it. Against what movement has West built? If Nick can come to this understanding, you're telling me a Harvard graduate can't um everton with all the funk on dr west and i was just explaining earlier if you guys missed the context like i'm like especially seeing anything going on now like these elections are tools I'm, and we need to build our own governments and that would jv that what you're doing whether you know it or not like when you do when we build in these rbn chapters it's about us having our like we're not there yet, but it's all about working to the point where we're yeah. independent from the system. You know what I mean? And the mm-hmm. role of any Marxist, socialism, revolution, revolutionary yeah. is to always work toward the revolution in any way that you can. So what I believe that we should do is engage mostly in local mutual aid, form chapters, form small communities, and have outside influence that is divested from the system. And then our being Kansas City, mutual, uh, Orlando mutual aid, we could we form coalitions, form yep. national protests, and also we got political power. Once again, this take time. This is take movement building, and that's what I'm interested in. I'm chatting yep. still, but JB, feel free to interrupt me if you want to. Just interrupt me if you want to. Yeah, uh, just 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 to harp on your point, um, one of the things that, and this is this is what I said on my stream earlier, is that you know when you don't have heroes, then you don't get disappointment. Disappointment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so the thing is, is like it, my focus is on the policy because look, uh, Jasmine Sherman, uh, Claudia De La Cruz, and Dr. Cornell West, they all have really great policies. Harp on the policies, use those to build worker solidarity and class consciousness, and then use them to do more on the ground movements, despite even outside of them running. And so then once you do that, then whether they win or lose, it doesn't matter. You're building <laughs> stuff on the ground. So you're not lying, man. You're not lying, my friend. No. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of people are like, man, how can you smoke on stream? And I'll be like, how can you guys not? <laughs> like, I'll be nervous to say, like, we got 600 people watching, bro. If it went for that shit, my anxiety be crazy, fam. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thank for the two bucks. That shit, it calms me down. Like, I don't do it to be, I'm not trying to be cool on stream. Like, that has nothing to do with it. Like, literally a way to calm my anxiety because I'll be nervous as hell otherwise. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks for two bucks, Jeff. Nick, this is exactly what we need. Reach out. We tried. Mm-hmm. Um, we had him on our show multiple times. Mm-hmm. Tr- always available. Thanks for five bucks. TZM. Uh, RFK stances on Israel Palestine are a non starter for leftists, in my opinion. Can we get back to discussing what, our suppo- what was supposed to be our candidate, please? Uh, thank for five bucks. Um, thank for one nine nine. Sam, thoughts on Nina Turner's new group? <laughs> Shady, JB, you want to chime in on that one? Oh, Nick, why you call on me for this one? If you want oh to. gosh. Okay, look, there. I, I don't necessarily. I don't see it as necessary. She could have just went with Worker Strike Back and then promoted them. Like, why do this? I don't know. But the whole thing, it, 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 it's like going to be a flash in the pan. It was like, oh, wow, she's doing that? Okay, moving on. Yeah. I hope she does well for workers. Me too. I think I think it, I agree with CJ initial point. It's a funny joke that that's pretty much a Democrat worker strike back. But, yeah. hey, she know workers is good, right? Yeah. 
I don't got faith in her. Like, do I think this is gonna be a good thing? No, but she will. If she helps work it, it's a good thing. That's my take on it. As simple yeah. as that. Uh, thing for five bucks, disco Phil. Police state conversations need to be more nuanced. Even lefties are worried about rampant crime in Philly, uh, San Francisco, L.A., which begs for better definition. And the argument that we make is that the Democratic Party's uh, policy has failed because the policy of the Democratic Party is increasing the police state. I'm worried about crime, too, guys. I want my community to thrive. You get, you guys think that as a co-founder of Tender Man, as an abolitionist, you guys think I want anarchy in my streets? The argument that we make is that we can do it better than the inefficient police force. You guys know the New York NYPD, they get three times more money than the North Korean military does. But crime is out of control. So as someone who's actually serious about this issue, so since finding the police not working, how about we actually find serious solutions? Yep. Right? <laughs> investing in education, investing in our communities, mm -hmm. right? Having true community defense, ending homelessness, yep. taking control of big pharma that has poisoned our communities. That's There's so many things there. that we could do. Like mm -hmm. our system is anarchy. Capitalism is anarchy. There is no central planning that is meant to take care of the people, which prevent crime. When you take care of the man, the material needs of the people, there is no crime. We have laws that is in line with the culture of the people instead of a rank authoritarianism, like our country has. You have rampant crime. We have the CIA, literally complicit with the crack cocaine crisis, with the fentanyl crisis. This is a conversation that you hear no one in the corporate media talk about, but it's fucking fact that the CIA did business with the, with the cartels. Yep. Why no one talking about this? But like we need to get rid of these rogue government agencies. The, the FBI is responsible for all the terrorism. So I don't put the onus on my people and I don't want a police state to rule our, our, our people because I know how other governments ruled and function. I know how humans operate. No one is gangbanging in the suburbs. Let me repeat. JB, no one is gangbanging in the suburbs. No, no, they don't. Who gangbanging yeah, in the suburbs? So raise the quality of life and there will be more, no more gangbanging. <laughs> how is that a hard concept to understand? It's JB, I'm going to chime I'll give you. I'll pass to you and then I'll, I'll, go, I'll move on. But I, I co-founded 10 minutes. I'm very passionate about this issue. So, um, no, uh, and, and rightfully so, because the thing is that a lot of times people don't believe that housing, health care, food, education, these are all public safety issues. If you don't think that people being evicted is not a public safety issue, then you really need to do more research. Yeah. So, yeah. Zoya's love, Zoya's life. Zoya, join us on Nick and Night next Wednesday. I am recruiting you, my friend. You, you can't have capitalism without a police state. Absolutely. Basically. You can't have so another fact that people struggle with that you can't have capitalism without slavery. Mm -hmm. Never had never existed. Still have still doesn't. Um I'll try to figure out what I here it is. I think I look up here. Corno is a lover and not a fighter. I think that's very fair to say. Yeah. Uh thing for the five bucks, name my taco. Uh this is during the savvy conversation. Exactly Savs. That's why we can't let Dr. West be used by the misleadership class. Dr. West went on RB in your show, but learned nothing. Those don't trust the PMCs. Uh, thanks for the five bucks. Thanks for the two bucks, Jeff Horn. Build your, our own governance. We can, should, and shall. Now, this is one of the things. Everyone has a role in this movement. Someone here watching the goddamn show is good at baking pies. Mm -hmm. So guess what your job in the movement should be? <laughs> you help bake goddamn pies for our betrayed society. See, once again, I'm, I come from a boxing background, boxing family. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to help people learn self-defense for free. So it's I, all about what I need you to know on that one. Oh, yeah. You guys are required. Yeah. You guys are, like Rome going to teach me how to shoot because that's why I won't learn how to do it. I need Rome him too. <laughs> yeah, so Rome going to teach me how to shoot. I'm going to show you guys how to do some leg kicks and shit. You know what I mean? Uh, Sweep so. the leg! <laughs> like Savvy said. Yeah. I got, I got a boxing bag too, man. I get back into sweet science, man. I fucking nice. miss boxing, man. Uh, thank for the two bucks, Jeff Horn. Mutual aid society, yes, please add technology. Once again, if you're a tech head, if you're um, if you're a class trader, let's say if you're in tech, you know, like because all these tech motherfuckers make money. My brother, I have my, my sworn brother, I should say, my good friend, uh, he got a good tech job, he make a fucking bank now. So if you're a cloud trader and you're in tech and programming, code for the code for the movement. <laughs> like, we need apps, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you guys see what I'm saying? Like, 
no matter what happens in the Cornell West campaign, our shit does not change at all. And that that's a lesson I learned from the Bernie campaign. The Bernie movement derailed everything. No, fuck, no matter what the fuck happens, we doing the same goddamn thing. Yep. Thank you guys for the thought provoking super chat. That's why it takes me a while to get through them. Uh, no, for every time. I appreciate all the support, Everton, for the super chats. Black people need to have a civil war first before we get other races to take our life seriously. I absolutely agree with that. When other races can point to black people not caring about black lives and make us look stupid. Absolutely, my friend. A civil war convo is needed. You guys, I'm, I plug it all the time. My first ever op ed I ever wrote on my sub stack was a criticism of how Barack Obama and the black boomers and the black congressional caucus abandoned our socialist grassroots activism roots and led our community off a cliff. And now you have a lot of black boomers and Gen X uh, people who are still waging class war on our people. Remember, who voted for Eric Adams, JB? Black boomers and black capitalists. Black boomers and black capitalists are sick in the police state on their own people. So that, JB, I'm going to chime in. Go free, man. Huh? Yeah. yeah, they supported the crime bill. Yeah, uh, Jamie, just feel free to cut me the fuck off of you, everyone. Trying to, <laughs> I won't get mad because I there's a lot to say. Thanks for the 999 Everton. Other races stick together and put their culture and race before all else, they don't uplift athletes. And dude, this is a whole conversation, my friend. <laughs> like, bro, we can have a whole conversation on this yeah. alone. They control their narrative and media and propaganda closely. Yeah. And this is stuff I say to my personal friends and family, man. But go, JB, if you want to. I'll let you That's go also due to capitalism and to divert, you know, our 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 focus away from what actually we need to, especially having a political and more of a, like a dialectical material analysis of what's been going on and how it reflects in, in our daily lives. I mean, that's, I think, one of the biggest issues. Uh, and that's really due to the conditioning due to capitalism. Ultimately, that's one of the biggest problems that we need to get over. And just like what Chairman Fred Hampton said, that we don't, uh, we won't get rid of capital. We won't uh, beat capitalism, black capitalism, with socialism. So we just have to remind everybody of their rich history, their rich uh, socialist and egalitarian history, you know, from our black radicals in the past. Well said, my friend. Mm -hmm. um, I told my. And I'm glad like this message is spreading. Like, man, I tell I tell my friends, my family, like, we need to take care of each other, man. Mm -hmm. Like, and um, I housed three of my relatives over the course of the last three years who otherwise would have been homeless. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I try to teach people to reject this bullshit individualism. Like this yeah. this system wasn't built for us. Like our tribes, our communities didn't live. In this yeah. harsh, rugged, individualist, capitalist way, and that is what led our community off the cliff more than anything. Uh, materialism, individualism, mm -hmm. uh, that bullshit. But that's a whole stream. Like I may talk to Everton one day. But that's a whole yeah. stream. I people talk about that. I would like thank to do for, it with you too. Yeah. Uh, thank for five bucks, Roger. Uh, never. China never increased the military budget or military base count. What she mean? They're preparing for war. Yeah, this is my China cut segment. Thank God, cable news audience shrinking, dude. Yeah, the, thank God the cable news audience is shrinking. But they got the Gen X and Boomer people. These motherfuckers watching both MSNBC and Morning Joe. They are fuming about China, China, China right now. Yeah, they got fucking. There, are, there are white people in the suburbs like Nick China about to invade us. What about Taiwan? They came and oh they, they came and put out Taiwan on the map. They can't even find Taiwan on the map. They don't even know that Taiwan is three times closer to China than Hawaii is to the United States. But they how much people gonna protect Taiwan? Oh man. Gosh. Uh we got two more super chats. Uh I appreciate all the support. It was a unexpected super stream today. Uh big shout out to CJ for carrying a lot of the show. Then you had Nick and JB the last hour, pretty much. Uh it was good to see Jay, uh, C, uh, CJ Keen and Savvy as well. JB, you just threw Sab on the bus. He admitted being the homework student. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Thanks for the two bucks. Uh, Marcus Lindis love police states, uh, to be fair. I would disagree with that, fam. <laughs> now, there are states before that acknowledged their enemies and acknowledged that they had 
uh, the West and the United States that was desperate to wage war on their people. So, if, for example, if you're Fidel Castro, if you're in Cuba, if you're in the DPRK and you had the United States military that want to destroy your people, you're going to run your society different than other people. You need to make sure that your enemies are in check and that no one is perpetuating uh, anti-revolutionary, infiltrator, infiltrator uh, liberal uh, infiltration of your government. Like People got to understand Cuba, the DPRK, a lot of these Marxist Lenin states, they've been at war, fam. You think you think the CIA is not infiltrating their country? You don't, you think the Western states are not trying to destabilize them? They have sanctions, so they gotta run their society different. So the argument that I make is that if you guys ever want to see a, a, a true social state as it's intended, the United States and Western capitalist countries need to leave them alone. Cuba is designed the way they do to protect itself from Western imperialist invader forces. The DPRK, the most lied about country in the world, North Korea, they have a tight control and flow of information because they are trying to prevent Western propagandists from tricking their people and they destabilizing the revolution, which I think is a just cause. So every culture will implement uh, systems and economic models in a different way. In the United States, considering the police state is controlled by the capitalist class, that is not the mode and model that we will follow. But you guys must understand that a lot of these socialist countries were at war, fam. Cold War, guerrillas, people were killing their people. They're going to have a militant police that will uphold the revolution that they have in place. Or the revolution will be destabilized and destroyed by the West. Now, this is a serious conversation that a lot of people in America are not ready for. But you got to understand, a lot of these countries were at war. And that's why they had to have the policies that they have. It's a very long conversation. I'll try, try to sum up. Uh, shortly, but there are a lot of reasons why Marxist Leninists and socialist countries have the policies that they do. But with that said, they still are more free than the United States. Do not get it twisted. Even the mo most rank uh, examples don't pale to the, the United States in terms of the amount of people that we imprison, the wealth that our police state stole. There's no, there's no uh, comparison there. But anyway, with that said, uh, Everton, that last super chat we read today. Appreciate your comments. JB, last thoughts. I'm tired. Uh, we got we got Jimmy Dore tomorrow, so we got a lot of, a lot of good shows coming up, and JB will be live as well. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna be having on Professor Anthony Zinkis on on Saturday. Uh, just to let everybody know, do not go anywhere because on this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you are in Orlando and would like to meet us in order to organize and volunteer for future actions on the ground here in Orlando chapter RBN. We're gonna be meeting at the Drunken Monkey Coffee Bar that's gonna be on 444 North Bumby Avenue, Orlando, Florida, 32803. We're gonna be going there. We're gonna be uh, meeting, talking about things that we can do on the ground here in Central Florida. So if you would like to and meet, then please make sure to come through so that we can meet and uh, exchange ideas on what we can do for our neighbors, especially the people who are suffering the most, which is our housing insecure and our unhoused neighbors as well. So just please. Uh, I, will, I just want to say this because I, I don't, we bought it in the stream, but you guys know that they got free housing in North Korea. Yeah. You guys know that we've been legal for quite some time in North Korea. Do North Korea in prison one fourth of the world's prison population? Wait, we just so my weed question weed is: if, if you if you can't afford housing, if you can't afford to live in ninety nine percent of the country, there's a latest there's a study I'm gonna show you guys later where ninety nine percent of the country is inhabitable by Americans. They can't afford to live in ninety nine percent of the country. So the question is: Are you really free if you can't afford housing? Like these are the questions that socialists ask ourselves. So in North Korea, everyone can afford housing. I mean, they give away free food all the time. Free marijuana is free. They have a big beer culture. They they everything you was told about North Korea is an absolute fucking lie. Point blank. You guys will probably didn't know a lot of that stuff. Yeah, lot, you guys know legal. Kim Jong Il is a big weed fan. He smokes weed all the time. <laughs> a lot of people don't know this stuff because just like uh, China, Lord and Lord, I just found this out. Lord. Yeah, yeah, dude. Fucking, I gotta do a stream on this. Like, bro, weed is a thing in North Korea. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, they have a strict drug war in South Korea where they imprison people for having weed. You know what I mean? 
So once again, everything you think you know about North Korea that came from the United States is false. It's false. It it like in love. <laughs> and, and regarding whether North Korea is true or not, once again, we gotta have a theoretical oh conversation what being free means. That's and in in North Korea, they provide housing for people. So yeah. if you can't afford housing, are you really free? Now these are these are philosophical questions. They provide education for everyone. If you can't afford a high level education, are you really free? Mm-hmm. The DPRK is not a perfect country. I don't want you guys to believe that. But the DPRK is a country that has been starved by sanctions for yeah. decades now. You had the West that tried to destroy it after they won the Korean War. Despite that, they still find a way to take care of their people. The United States has skid row, millions of people homeless, millions of people who don't have health care, tens of thousands who die, who die each year. But who the fuck is sanctioning us? Who's sanctioning the United States, fam? So the DPRK is not perfect, but I think they do a good job considering the economic war that they've been victims of over the last few decades or so. Right? Decolonize your mind. Everything you learn from the West is false. Please. So I think that's a good way in stream. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you very much, me, JB. I don't know what overlay. What overlay CJ used? I think this is it. Anyway, see, uh, check out Savvy's interview with uh, Joe Stein. We'll be back with Jimmy Dore tomorrow. Have a good one, fam.